What up, Fuzz Aldrin? <laughs> Fuzz Aldrin loves my stream. Thank you, Mr. Fuzz Aldrin. Hopefully you stay tuned. If you want to talk about random movie stuff not necessarily pertaining to the Oscars, we can do that. Let me know if you can hear me as well. Can you hear me? Fuzz Aldrin says, I, I don't watch American movies. Well, I don't blame you. And, uh, don't go based off the Oscars. Uh, it's not really the cream of the crop here. Where are you from, Fuzz? Ah, so you're from America, but you don't watch American movies. I can respect it. Born and raised. I'm watching the red carpet right now, and uh, I'm just watching it for the memes. I don't know if you're aware, but they didn't invite the lead actress from West Side Story. And, uh, yeah, I'm looking at the people they invited instead of her, and there's, like, Megan the Stallion, and uh, Travis Barker, and uh, whichever Kardashian he's married to. It's already a bit of a meme show. Fuzz says, our movies are terrible. We need better stories. I agree. Uh, you know, like, I I get annoyed when people are like, oh, TikTok, these kids these days, they all go on TikTok. But it's like, if there is something worth going to the theater for, I think people would go to the theater. I think people still like going to the theater. It's just people don't like spending 20 bucks on a movie that's subpar. So... Of the movies nominated tonight, I did like West Side Story, the Spielberg remake, and I did like Dune, and I liked Licorice Pizza. Everything beyond that is a bit, like, I wasn't really big into, but those are the three where I was more interested in. Even then, my top ten of last year doesn't really resemble the ten nominees here tonight. What are some good foreign movies you saw recently, Fuzz? <laughs> Tony Hawk. For those of you just tuning in, I'm, uh, I'm, it technically starts at 8. I started a little earlier just to make sure there's no technical difficulties, but 
everything seems to be functional. So I think we're all set. Guys, if there's any problems tonight, if um, my voice is too loud or too low, let me know. Fuzz says, RRR was really good. It is in theaters today. What's RRR? I've never heard of that. Let me just Google it real quick. Oh yeah, I've, I've, I've seen this trailer actually. Oh yeah, it rings a bell. All right, I might check it out. Oh my god, it overtook Batman at the box office. Holy mackerel. I have a, not gonna lie, I have a tough time with, this seems to be a Bollywood movie. I have a tough time with Bollywood movies. They like kind of come across as over the top. But uh, I'm down for the idea of giving it another shot. The, the problem is I kind of live, I'm back in, in my hometown, but next week I'm going back to where I live. I live in America. And, uh, yeah, the, I don't get a wide movie selection in America because I live in, like, the middle of nowhere in America. I'll be lucky if there's something that plays that isn't a Marvel movie or a Disney movie. The last movie I saw was Red Rocket. The movie is about grooming children. Oh, just before that, one second. Pure Hangout says, you watching the red carpet right now? Yes, I am. Pure Hangout, I was just saying that uh, I thought it was weird that the lead actress of West Side Story didn't get an invitation. And I'm looking at all the people here, and there's like Meg Thee Stallion, and uh, who else? There was like Travis Barker and, and one of the Kardashians. So uh, red carpet's not really impressing me so far. Um, Nicole Kidman's here right now, and I hope she does little Grinch fingers. The last American movie I saw was Red Rocket. You know what? Red Rocket was actually one of my favorite movies of last year. And I can understand what you mean about the plot of it grooming children. But that's what I thought was kind of cool about Red Rocket, is that the character was a complete scumbag. You weren't supposed to like the character in that movie. Um, that's what I really liked. It was like... I'm, like, kind of finding this man charismatic, but he's also very disgusting. He's very narcissistic as well, like, putting aside the grooming children. Uh, he's also just, like, a despicable person. He's a narcissist. He's always talking about making his comeback. And it, the story is about a man grooming a child in order to make his comeback because he's a fading star. And I think that's ultimately what I ended up liking about it, was the fact that it was so disgusting and the way the movie looks as well, just like the fact that it like takes place in this very industrial town, uh, it was a, you're right, it is a disgusting movie and I can understand why it can uh, stray people away, but uh, I really enjoyed Red Rocket. It was actually probably my third favorite movie of last year. But uh, yeah, again, I can understand why someone could find the subject matter a little disgusting and... Yeah, there's some, like, there's some subject matter that I find disgusting as well. You know what? Like, I would have rathered uh, the lead actor of Red Rocket get nominated over many of the nominees uh, right now. Have you seen Compartment Number 6? That's another one I haven't heard of. Let me look that one up, too. Here's the thing with, like, 2022. Like, ever since post-pandemic, it's like everyone's watching different shit. It's currently playing at my movie theater. Uh, let me see what it's about. But again, I'm in my hometown in Canada, and I'm only I'm leaving tomorrow back to my, like, where I'm living in America, and it will, probably won't play there. 
a Finnish student and a minor slowly forge a hesitant connection when they throw together in a cramped train quarters and a journey across Russia. Seems a little weird. How was it? Did you watch it? It has some okay reviews, I'm looking it up now. Oh, it's is it nominated for an Academy Award? Let me see, I have the nominees in my description. Uh, best International Film. No, it's not nominated for an Academy Award. Why does it say on the poster, Academy Award Best Internet? Oh, maybe last year. Okay, makes sense. Oh, no, no, it's the Finland entry. Okay, I see. I see. Sorry, I was a little lost in the sauce there. Compartment number six is like a Russian Before Sunset with Ethan Hawke. Well, I do like Before Sunset. I like all three of those movies, so... I'm gonna write these down, actually. Like, <laughs> while the Oscars are boring, I'll probably just uh, make a document and write down the nominees for stuff. Might be uh, more fruitful than watching the Academy Awards. So, I'm adding to my watch list compartment number six. And uh, what was the other movie? Let me scroll back in the chat. Compartment number six and RRR. Or I don't know how you say it. I don't know if it's like a rolled R or a... Number... Compartment number six, sorry. I think I said number nine. Hola, mi amigo! Rafael Paganoni says. Hola! Uh... Ash Ventura, <laughs> Ash Ventura, he's a frequent commenter on this channel, and uh, I watch his stuff as well. You know, it was a weird moment was I was looking at Ash Ventura's, uh, he does like a travel vlog, and uh, in his travel vlog, he went to my hometown and went on the street where I used to volunteer, um, like a hospital I used to volunteer at, and I thought, I was like, whoa! I don't even know this guy until uh, YouTube. It's not like I knew him prior. I thought that was a really cool thing. Uh, have you seen Lun Luana Yak in the Classroom, nominated for Best Foreign Movie? Uh, that's another one. Let me look that up real quick. Hmm. Nope, I haven't heard of this one either. Again, I'm going to add that to my list. Ever since the pandemic and like everything went to streaming, it's been so hard to watch movies. Like just cuz back in the day there wasn't streaming, so everyone would kind of watch their own shit, you know? Uh sorry, everyone would watch the same shit. Everyone would gather to the movie theater and watch Top Gun, for example. But now it's like everyone's doing their own shtick, you know? It's not as fun. It's like, I, I try watching the trending shit on uh, Netflix just to be in the loop with things, but it's like my Netflix looks different from everyone else's uh, Netflix. I 
Ash Ventura laughs. Anthony Hopkins Zoom call. Yeah. Anthony Hopkins doesn't like the Academy Awards. That's the thing about Anthony Hopkins, which, uh, by the way, pretty based of Anthony Hopkins. So I don't think he's going to show up tonight. He's going to use COVID as an excuse. Whoops. No, I'm going to get copyrighted. I unplugged my headphones by accident. Phew, okay. <laughs> if you play the sound of the Academy Awards, you can get a copyright notice. Uh, but hopefully I don't get caught. Uh, that would be so unfortunate. I just unplugged my headphones by accident. All right, I think we're all good. But yeah, he, he's not a fan of the Oscars, so I don't think he's going to show up. He's going to, like, announce the award via Zoom call. Uh, pure Hangout. Were the Licorice Pizza Kids invited? I saw them, yeah. I, I at least saw um, uh, the girl. I, I forget her name. She was there. I didn't see the other guy, Philip Seymour Hoffman's kid. I feel like if you're up for best pick, you need the whole cast there. Yeah, I agree. At least, like, the... Uh, at least, like, the main cast needs to show up, you know? Like, it's so unforgivable, uh, the fact that they didn't invite the lead. And they have Meg the Stallion. It's like, bruh, like, Meg the Stallion is, like, a trend. And they have Tony Hawk. It's like, like, people are saying it's because he was in the documentary on your Superman. Or pretending I'm a Superman, sorry. Uh, which I didn't see the documentary, and I do plan on watching it, just because I think the subject matter is interesting. But the fact that you don't invite the the lead, I thought she was the lead of West Side Story. It was her movie, mostly, in my opinion. Uh, the fact that you didn't invite her to the Oscars, it's... <laughs> that's a joke. Oh, no! Pure Hangout says, I think I saw Anthony Hopkins walking and looking badass. No! Already a bingo down. Fuzz Aldrin. RRR equals roar, rise, and revolt. There. Okay, that makes sense. So I shouldn't call it R. I should call it RRR. Uh, Ash Ventura. Aha, thanks. And hey, Pure Hangout. Yeah, I see sometimes Ash Ventura comments on Pure Hangout's videos as well. F <clears throat> Sorry, Fuzz Aldrin, what's your favorite movie? Mine is The Great Indian Kitchen. It's free on YouTube. Uh, favorite movie. Okay, well, my favorite movie of last year was actually a Greek movie, and it was called Apples. And uh, it was about this virus that kind of goes around the, like, the world, and it erases people's memory, and it gives them, like, dementia. And it becomes so widespread that, they're, like, instead of rehabilitating people to remember who they are. Let's just give them new identities. I thought that was the best movie of last year. If you're talking all time, that's a big question. Um, the movie that's, to me, responsible for me liking movies is Pulp Fiction. Because um, when I first saw Pulp Fiction, it was like, whoa, that was like so different. And uh, Fight Club was another one of those kind of movies. And Apocalypse Now and Patton is another one. So I have a lot of favorites. I can't narrow it down. Uh, Fuzz Aldrin, Netflix movies are movies made by committee. Uh, they have checklists and algorithms to make their movies. I'd actually disagree with you. Um, I feel like Netflix is actually, right now anyway, it might change in the future, but they're actually making some pretty good stuff. Like, sure, they have some committee stuff. Like, I saw the trailer for Adam Project, and that looks pretty committee. But, uh, the last, uh, Charlie Kaufman movie... I'm thinking of ending things. That was a Netflix original movie. And completely different movie. And I think Charlie Kaufman had free reign to do whatever he wants. And there's a lot of that kind of stuff on Netflix. So it's, it's yeah, it's like a... And I wouldn't call The Irishman, which is a Netflix original movie. I wouldn't call that uh, committee filmmaking or marriage story. I wouldn't call... Or Uncut Gems. Uncut Gems. I wouldn't call that committee filmmaking. And all of those are Netflix original movies. They do have the committee movies. They have, like, the Six Undergrounds and the... Yeah, like I said, the Adam Projects and all those kind of movies. They do have that. But I'd say Disney is much more of a committee filmmaking company than Netflix. But, yeah, I can see it going in that direction. Does it start in 15? It starts at 8, yeah.
And uh, if you guys noticed, um, Will Smith wins. Cut to Jada being supportive. I just saw them on the red carpet, and uh, I think that might be a, a bingo. It might be a little chip I put on my card. Um, Jada was uh, all touching, like, I'm so proud of him. Obviously compensating for the fact you embarrassed him on social media. Yeah, it is what it is. Ash Ventura says, Uncut Gems was a gem. Uncut Gems was such a dank movie. I saw that in the movie theater and I was like, I kind of knew what I was getting into because I saw the director's last movie, which was, uh, what was that called with Robert Pattinson? Good Time. I saw a Good Time in the cinema. Not in the cinema, sorry. I, I caught it on uh, streaming. And I thought, whoa, that was amazing. So I, when I went to, to the cinema to see Uncut Gem, um, I, I knew what I was getting into. Kind of like this like crime movie that's super anxiety-inducing. And I liked it more than Good Time. Because I thought Adam Sandler was phenomenal in it. And uh, Lakeith Stanfield is one of the greatest actors working right now, in my opinion. And then you had like other people in the movie... Uh, you had, like, Kevin Garnett, who used to play for the Celtics, and he actually appears in the movie. You have, uh, you have The Weeknd in the movie. It was just such a unique movie. Uh, I thought Dune was amazing, Fuzz Aldrin says. But I had to cut my score in half because we only got half a movie. And yeah, and if you actually saw my other videos where I talk about Dune, I have the same philosophy as you. Technically a masterpiece... Like, it's very well shot, really well acted. Everything about it, like, the mythology behind it is awesome. And, like, the fact that they sweat in suits and they drink their sweat. And uh, the spices and the giant sandworms. Like, the world building in it was really interesting. But, yeah. The last time, like, I, I scored the first part of a trilogy before watching the whole trilogy. Uh, last time I remember doing that was... Uh, for Star Wars Episode 7. And when I watched Star Wars Episode 7, I was like, you know what? I think Rey's very charismatic. Uh, I really liked uh, John Boyega's character. And I thought every all the pieces were there. And even though it was a retread of A New Hope, I figured they're going to start off like that and Jen just do a 90-degree turn and change the direction completely. I thought they had everything mapped out. And then you watched like Episode 8, and I didn't even get to Episode 9 because I was so turned off. Uh, so it's like, then you watch episode 7, it's like, okay, this is obviously a dumpster fire in retrospect, because you know what's coming later. You got the same thing with The Matrix. Like, you watch the first Matrix, and it's awesome, and then you watch Matrix 2 and 3, and then you go back to 1, and you're like, oh my god, okay. It kind of, there's some movies where the sequel will kind of make you hate the first one. So, I'm like, I learned my lesson with Star Wars. It's like, let me just tread carefully going forward. Ash Ventura, uh, did you like the movie Old? <laughs> I watched the movie Old, and uh, I, I, I wanted to drag my friends to the cinema to watch it. And uh, we, I, I dragged my friends to the cinema, and they're like, oh, is the movie going to be good? And I was like, listen, this director, he's made amazing movies. He's made The Sixth Sense, Unbreakable, Signs. I even like The Visit for what it is. Um... The Split movie was good. So you're either going to get that, or you're going to get the complete 180, and uh, it's going to be something like The Happening, or uh, like, uh, what was that other one? The Lady in the Swimming Pool. So anyway, I dragged my friends to go see it, and lo and behold, it's The Lady in the Swimming Pool, and Night Shyamalan we got. It was such a corny movie. It was so schlocky, but you know what? I was entertained thoroughly throughout the movie. Like, I thought it was funny, probably unintentionally, but I still got some good laughs out of it. And you know what? I was in the theater. Um, I consumed some mind-altering substances prior. Um, alcohol. <laughs> I don't know why I had to make it sound a little sketchy. But, uh, yeah, I, I was a little tipsy. I went to see it, and I had a good time. It was schlocky. It was fun. Um, nothing deep. The part that was really funny was there was a part in that movie where M. Night Shyamalan does his cameo. He cameos in all his movies, kind of like uh, Alfred Hitchcock. And uh, I thought the twist was going to be that the whole movie was M. Night Shyamalan writing these characters and it was going to do like a fourth wall break, but that's not what happened. Turns out it was like some big pharma ploy. Um, 
old to me was good. I enjoyed watching watching it. Am I ever going to watch it again? No. But it was a fun, schlocky movie. That's my review of old. Do you have a Letterboxd account to share with me? Unfortunately, I don't. I have an IMDb account. And I don't know how to share that, if it has the share. I had an IMDb account for the longest time now. I've had an IMDb account back when uh, IMDb still had message boards. I don't know if you guys remember that far, but like before like Reddit was as big as it is today, uh, IMDb had its own discussion board where you can kind of discuss the movies. And those that used to be the shit, and that's what really got me into IMDb. Um, I, I probably, my account's probably at least 11 years old, <laughs> so it's an old account. I don't know if I can share the ratings the same way you can do with Letterboxd, um, but it is what it is. Whoa! Rachel Zegler on the red carpet! Ho <laughs> ho! Oh, sorry, I probably blew your eardrums. Ah, let me just turn that down a little bit. Yeah, Rachel Zegler just showed up <laughs> with the late invite. All right. <laughs> Oh, wowee. What a meme. Um, yeah, so I don't have a letterbox, so I, unfortunately I can't share it with you, but... Your thoughts on Black Panther 2? Some say T'Challa variant will appear. Would you like to see uh, replace Chad with Boseman? Uh, no. To be honest, like, I kind of fell off the Marvel train. I wasn't that big into the first Black Panther movie. For reasons I can get into later, but... I'm, I'm not a fan of Black Panther, and uh, going forward, I think the best thing to do, it's going to be schlocky, but have his sister replace him. I don't think they're going to go down that route, because from what I'm reading, she's a little, like, a bit of a publicity nightmare. She, like, puts some anti-vax stuff on the internet and all that stuff, but for what it is, I think that girl's a really talented actress, and it, going forward, if you're going to have a replacement for Black Panther, I think she's like, the natural replacement. A lot of people want Killmonger to be the next Black Panther, and I think he's just such a good antagonist. He can be basically the Loki of the MCU going forward, so I wouldn't want to see him as a good guy, per se. Uh, yeah, but I don't even think I'm going to catch... To be honest, I didn't look see the first Black Panther in the cinema. I probably caught it, like, two years later on Netflix. So I, I wasn't all that interested in the first Black Panther. It could have been a lot better. Um, the director of Black Panther is actually making a TV show taking place in Wakanda. And to be honest, I think that's more interesting than like another Black Panther, but who knows. Uh, who, who do you think would make a good Black Panther in the second one? Yeah, but I thought Chadwick Boseman was one of the things that was so good about the first Black Panther movie. I think Chadwick Boseman was a great actor. If you ever saw the movie where he plays James Brown, it's not really a good movie, but just watch clips on the internet of him uh, being James Brown. It, it, it's like immaculate how he, he uh, emulates James Brown in that. Guys, I'm going to come right back. I'm going to take a piss before the Oscars start. I'll be right back, all right? Alright, I'm back. Sorry, folks. 
nature calls. Uh, I needed to get a... I couldn't miss the beginning of the most important day of the year, the Academy Awards. All right, Ash Ventura says, uh, yes, he does. M. Night Shams is pretty good, usually. I did like it. Yeah, it's it, it really felt nostalgic to me watching uh, the old movie. Because if you guys remember, like, uh, M. Night Shyamalan had, like, uh, all what I would call his good phase, so it was like Six Sense all the way to Signs, arguably The Village. There's some stuff I like in The Village. Then there was like a shit phase, and then there was like a, a rebirth phase where he did like The Visit, Split, Glass, and uh, yeah, this was like a return to the schlocky phase in M. Night Shyamalan's career. So I, I liked it for what it was, but everyone I went to the theater with freaking wanted to murder me, so... <laughs> The space between our houses. Hi there, space between our houses! You always comment on my videos, and now it's cool to have a dialogue, so... Uh, hopefully the Eddie is kicking in by now. <laughs> uh, I wish they'd bring Billy Crystal back to host the Oscars. Yeah! <laughs> oh! Wait, why are they opening... <laughs> why is Venus and Serena Williams opening the Oscars? A little... <laughs> yeah, Billy Crystal was definitely one of the best. I really liked Seth MacFarlane. Seth MacFarlane was one of the best ones to me. Uh, for what he was, a lot of people hated him because he did the boob song. I thought the boob song slapped. Not only did it slap, but it was kind of... Oh, fuck, I keep unplugging this by accident. Not only did it slap, but uh, I thought it was actually kind of educational. It was like a, a little tidbit of uh, film history. I've had two edibles! Ha <laughs> ha! Wowee. Uh-oh, what's going on here? What's going on? The space. Beyonce dressed in... T oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Why are these starting? Oh no. I had a feeling Beyonce was gonna do it, something because at the during the red carpet everyone was thirsting for her. Like, oh my God, Beyonce is she gonna levitate to the podium when she wins her Oscar? Um, I never understood the Queen. Queen B has some of the most annoying fans ever. Ash Ventura, if you're referring to the space I am in right now, it's my dad's office. He lent it to me. <laughs> for my live stream cuz uh it's got better wi-fi than my bedroom Beyonce dressed in tennis ball colors um yeah that's what made me laugh it was just so like making tennis a little epic but uh why are they just doing one movies are they going to like do a mashup of all of the best original songs I think Beyonce's music is good. She's just got an annoying fan base, and I think she might be part of the Illuminati. <laughs> you can't say anything negative about Beyonce. I'm trolling. See, that's what I mean. You should be able to criticize Beyonce. You know what? Jay-Z is the more talented one of the two, in my opinion. Oh, shit! But, uh, yeah. 
The, one of the reasons why I also don't like Beyonce is because she told Jay-Z to stay away from Kanye. They had, like, a little feud for a while. And Kanye and Jay-Z was one of those dank bromances. <laughs> I was referring to the Eddies. Oh, I see. <laughs> but nice place. Uh, I wonder if anybody ever asks Beyonce about being in Austin Powers 3. Dude, if I met Beyonce, that'd be the first thing I ask. How did you pull off the role of Foxy Cleopatra in Austin Powers 3? And if they make an Austin Powers 4, would you be open to returning? Um, those would be the questions I asked Beyonce. Um, I think she should be more ashamed of being in the Lion King remake than Austin Powers 3. Like, if you put them head to head, Austin Powers 3 is a better move than the Lion King remake. I didn't see the Lion King remake, so I, I shouldn't even be talking. She looks good for her age, though. Oh, that's for sure. Um, I don't think anyone's arguing that. She's, she's a gorgeous woman. Uh, listen, if I saw Beyonce in real life, listen, I'm trolling right now. I'm acting like an elite. Like, I'm acting like a little troll behind his computer. But if I saw Beyonce in real life, I'd low-key melt. <laughs> I'm just acting like this right now. <laughs> Hopefully she never sees it. Who's next? N just says N. Thank you, N, for that constructive... Uh, feel free to say more stuff than just your username. Uh, the space between our houses, she can afford to look good for her age. Exactly. And uh, that goes for everyone in the audience here tonight. Um, yeah, all of these celebrities are like, oh, let's send a good message forward to young ch young women. We need to be the voices of reason for young women, but then they get all plastic surgery and this. It's like, I don't want my, if I had a daughter, I wouldn't want her to get plastic surgery and look like a clown. All right. Actually, uh, she should have won an Oscar for her role in Austin Powers. That's what I'm talking about. Um, no, actually, it was pretty terrible acting, but it worked because it was Austin Powers, but... I think in any... I saw the movie Black is King, which is like... Uh, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh no, what's going on? What was that? What was that? You guys are a bit ahead of me. There we go! First bingo. Oh no, these jokes are falling flat, man. Ash Ventura. <laughs> Ash Ventura, what was the Amy Schumer body joke? Can you write it in the chat?
I don't understand their jokes. They're all falling flat. Like, what was that joke with the electricity flashing? <laughs> is that the only reason why they put black hosts is because they know the Golden Glo Globes bit the dust? Ah, uh, <laughs> they said Mitch McConnell and Power of the Dog. Good one. I don't even know who Mitch McConnell is. I just know he's a politician. That's the girl from Scary Movie. I would recognize her voice anywhere. Yeah, I am a minute behind. My bad. Let me try to fix that. Just give me one sec. I'll be right back. Oh shit, I missed two bingos. Fuck. All right. Don't say gay talk. I'll take your word for it. What did John Travolta do? I missed that. Okay. I'm going to try to figure this out.
I think that counts as a body joke. She said a, a joke about Melissa McCarthy. That counts as a body joke, in my opinion. Oh my god, so many Amy Schumer body jokes. Yeah, I'm a bit behind. Like, I, I know what I did wrong. It's just, this is the first time I do a live stream. And, uh... Let me see if I can fix it, actually. I might be able to. Yeah, for me to uh, fix the delay, I'd have to start a new stream. Guys, this bingo might fail. I think we might get a bingo way too early. <laughs> we just saw Penelope Cruz. Here's like a weird story. I actually... Okay, I'm not gonna say... I know someone who knows someone who works for Penelope Cruz. And uh, I didn't hear favorable things about her. Oh, she actually roasted Don't Look Up. She did a joke. She said uh, the Academy members don't look up reviews. Grinch fingers, let's go. Nicole Kidman, Grinch fingers. I think, uh, she, so she's talking about being the Ricardos, which I actually watched. And, uh, I think not being funny is the least of the problems of that movie. Uh, it was flatly shot. The story wasn't compelling. There's too much going on. Um, I think the fact that they went in a dramatic direction was not the problem with it. I do have a bit of a delay. I apologize, guys, but I think it's still, uh, we can still do this. If you guys think it's really annoying, the delay, just say it in the chat and I can try something, but it would require me to restart it completely and create a new one and... I don't know if I want to do that, but if you guys want it, uh, I can do it.
Yeah, Fuzz Aldrin says Judas and the Black Messiah came out in February 2021, but it's considered a 2020 movie. That's because the deadlines were all fucked up because of the pandemic. They had to delay the Oscars, so they delayed the, uh, the, they delayed the deadline for the Oscars as well. So it was considered a movie from last year. Uh, the Father was another one of those movies where it came out and, like, it got its theatrical release and around the same time, maybe a few weeks earlier. I tried watching The Lost Daughter. I thought it was so boring. I had to turn it off. I, I like, uh, Ariana DeBose. Jesse Buckley won the British version of American Idol. I didn't even know that. So the nominees here, you got Judy Dench for Belfast, Ariana DeBose for uh, West Side Story. Uh, you have Jesse Buckley for Lost Daughter. I, wa I tried watching The Lost Daughter. I couldn't get through it. Uh, Kirsten Dunst for Power of the Dog. Uh, and I can't pronounce the name for King Richard. Um, Power of the Dog, Kirsten Dunst, for me, is the best performance of the five. Uh, I think Judy Dench is going to win. By the time you guys hear this, we'll probably know who the winner is. <laughs> I didn't even like Power of the Dog, but I, I thought her performance was the standout. She's sang in a movie called Wild Rose. I've never heard of that movie. Wild Rose. Hmm. It's another one I'll add to my list. Why are they playing Talking Heads when she wins the Oscar? It's kind of weird. I thought they'd play a... Uh, Officer Crumpkey, ba-boop, ba, -boo -ba, -ba -boop. Well, at least she's not, like, saying some political thing. Like, she's actually talking about her family and her craft. Um, so. And I thought she did a really good job in the movie. Kudos to you, Miss DeBose. Oh no, I spoke too soon.
All right, commercial break, commercial break. Uh, yeah, it's kind of uh, the same as every other year so far. Um, it's a kind of a shame. I wanted it to feel more train wrecky. The intro was pretty bad, where you had Beyonce. Because um, last year, I remember they had uh, Janelle Monet doing the intro song, and I caught it later. And I don't think she did a bad job. She did the Mr. Rogers musical number, and uh, she did, like, a tribute to Midsommar, which got snubbed that year. Uh, I might be thinking of the wrong year, but it might be two years ago. But, yeah, this one was just, like, a King Richard. Why are they having Venus and... Like, it feels like a little biased. Why would you have Venus and Serena Williams presenting the Oscar, uh, the intro? Like, you open on them, it's like, okay, yeah. How much did he get bribed to promote King Richard here, eh? Dude, I swear this is like the 10th ad for hyaluronic acid I get. Ash Ventura, maybe you can uh, second that because I know you're in Canada right now. And I'm getting the Canadian ads, but I'm getting a, a ton of hyaluronic acid of, uh, ads. <laughs> Thank you, Ash Ventura. I needed someone to second it. So, so far, just to keep track, Ariana DeBose won for Best Supporting Actress. Guys in the chat, did you watch Belfast? What did you guys think? Black Powder Burner is here. Hey, Black Powder Burner. I don't know what you're talking about. Notice me, Senpal? What's Senpal? I'm going to have to Urban Dictionary that one. Senpao is like a senpai, except the fact that it is someone you really want to be friends with as opposed to someone you have an obsessive crush on. Well, I'll take it as a 
compliment there, Black Powder Burner, and I don't know if that's what you meant by Sen Pal, but that's what Urban Dictionary gave me. I don't know what this girl is up to. What is this? Ash Ventura didn't see Belfast. I thought it was okay. Blech. It was okay. Why does it look like Will Smith and Jada are, like, so far apart from everyone else? Taco Belfast, Buzz Aldrin says. That was a forced laugh, in my opinion, from uh, Denzel Washington. I won't count it as a bingo yet. I think he's going to be more uh, don't give a fucky. What was that? They didn't even do a sketch. They just had them on stage. This is so hard. Oh, no. The COVID pat down. <laughs> Me too. Time's up. Regina Hall touching folks. Oh, come on. He's a married man. Oh, wait. He's not a married man. <laughs> oh, oh, I did a divorce joke. My bad. <laughs> that was a... A joke about him divorcing, uh, what was that girl's name? Lisa Bonet? Okay, that's awkward comedic presenter skit. I count that as awkward comedic. Would you guys agree that was an awkward comedic presenter skit? Dune yawn, Fuzz Aldrin says. Um, yeah, I wouldn't call it a yawn. I was definitely entertained the whole time, but I really want to see what happens next before I get my uh, before I get my uh, testosterone elevated over it. Is this all pre-recorded? I'm going to count the Jason Momoa thing and the Josh Brolin thing as awkward uh, comedic presenter skit. That was definitely some awkward comedic presenter skit, if you want to call it that. Ah, oh, yes! He spoke a little Quebecois. Ash, I got a question for you. Do you speak French?
Why are they showing white men can't jump? Ah, that's why. Guys, I'm waiting for the Wesley Snipes comeback. He was one of the coolest people in Hollywood. Whatever ha- Demolition Man? Blade? We need the Wesley Snipes comeback. Who's with me? Wesley Snipes, please make a comeback. He lost a lot of weight, Wesley Snipes, too. Jeez. They pre-recorded eight award categories. Yeah, I'm aware of that, but which awards did they have to pre-record? I'm not sure. I think sound might have been one of them. I mean... Oh! Weed joke! Rosie Perez still looks amazing, by the way. Oh, that's right. I remember French is your first language. Yeah, I was confused because uh, I know you... Uh, I don't want to say where you live, but I know you're from an English part in Canada. But uh, I live in the French... I, I live in Quebec. Wesley was great in coming to America, too. Um, you want to hear a funny... St oh, I probably shouldn't say this. I got in a lot of trouble because of the movie Coming to America too. I can't say it because it's a crime and I don't want to get in trouble. Wesley Snipes was on a show this year with Kevin Hart. It was really good. What was that? True Story, it's called. Oh, yeah, I, I know about True Story. Uh, I think that's the one where... Uh, yeah, so True Story was on that streaming service that failed. What was that called? Um, it was a streaming service where it was from the guy who created DreamWorks. And it was like a complete bomb. I forget what it was called, but then it got sold to Netflix. And that's probably how you watched it, Ash Ventura. It came out before on that shitty streaming service that went bankrupt. Doom's winning a lot so far. I'll be home in time for dinner. Someone wasn't invited to the after party. Oh, no. Up next, Sean White and Tony Hawk. Oh, no. Probably shouldn't have whistle.
commercial break. So let's take a look at our bingo card. So far we got four. Amy Schumer body jokes. That was such a given. Uh, I'm the first black female host joke. Don't say gay talk. I missed that one. Fuzz Aldrin is telling me that it happened while I was at the bathroom or so. I was trying to fix something rather. An awkward comedic presenter skit was... Uh, um, that was basically what, uh, not, or whatchamacallit, Josh Brolin, the other guy, uh, uh, Bonet's husband, ex-husband. This is the first time I do a live stream as well, so hopefully you guys are enjoying it. Um... I'll do more in the future, and uh, it probably will be easier because, like, right now I'm trying to watch something live while reporting live, and there's always going to be some delay because uh, it's hitting my airwaves, and then I'm hitting your airwaves, so there's always going to be a little bit of a delay. But, uh, yeah, hopefully I can do more of these in the future. I want to get to a point where my channel's big enough just to, like, get on, do some live stuff, and talk with you guys, movies, and random other stuff. What else can we talk about? Movies, Mitch McConnell, <laughs> the Mitch McConnell joke, that's the only thing I know, um, yeah, But in case you guys missed the red carpet, I'll fill you in on it. It was a, a lot of glitz and glamour. Um, one part that made me laugh is, uh, I think it was Vanessa Hudgens who was doing it. And she went to Josh Brolin and she was like, oh, no, someone else. But anyway, they went to Josh Brolin and they're like, oh, when you were filming Dune, were you thinking like, oh, I just hope this gets me to the red carpet. It's like as if he was fucking thinking that while recording Dune. He's like fucking playing in Dune and he's thinking like, oh, I hope I get a good check out of this. It's a fun time, whatever. I think the last thing on his mind is, oh, I hope I fucking get some recognition from the Oscars and get to go on the red carpet. That was the last thing that was on Josh Brolin's mind. One thing, totally off topic too, one thing that annoyed me about Dune was uh, they completely forgot about Josh Brolin's character. And I'm sure he's going to show up in the next movie, but it's just like... It's like going back to what uh, Fuzz Aldrin was saying. It really is hard to judge the first part of a movie because it's like you're watching it and it's like, okay, what happened to Josh Brolin? He just disappeared all of a sudden. So, it, yeah, it's whatever. So right now they're presenting uh, the short awards. Um, I want to let you guys know that... Uh, so yeah, back when I was an undergrad, I was studying film. Uh, yeah, just a little bit about me, I guess. I study pharmacy right now, but I used to study film with pharmacy, and then I had to study pharmacy. But uh, I plan on pursuing film later on as well. And uh, where was I going with this? Yeah, I, I actually got a short film into a festival and uh, the f festivals, they'll prioritize movies with, like, relevant subject matter. I'm not just saying that because my film was there. My film was actually dog shit. I don't even know how it got into the festival. But all of the movies that did well at the festival were movies about LGBT, um, Native Americans, um, just stuff like that. Uh, so, yeah. the topic of the short mo film definitely plays a part in its recognition. So if you guys are uh, passionate about film, think of making movies that are about Native Americans or uh, LGBT rights or Black Lives Matter, stuff like that, stuff that's very topical because that tends to be what wins. Uh, 
You'd think they'd have more movie trailers during the Oscars, I'd agree, but... Uh, here's your mistake, Fuzz. The Oscars is not about movies. It's about whatever else but movies. It's about fashion, glamour, politics, sometimes maybe movies. So achievement in visual effects. So you have Dune, Free Guy, Spider-Man. I don't even know how Spider-Man got nominated. So Dune won for best visual effects. If Spider-Man No Way Home, I had a feeling it would be Dune, but I thought like Spider-Man No Way Home might have done an upset just so they can go with the more popular movie. Um, I don't understand how Spider-Man No Way Home gets nominated because Spider-Man No Way Home, they admitted uh, they didn't complete the special effects. They didn't have enough time because of the pandemic. They were probably shorter staffed and... Uh, Disney, Marvel, they work on a certain crunch time. That's why when you watch Black Panther, the visual effects are incomplete. So I, I don't even understand how... I, I didn't see Shang-Chi. I, I can't judge that one. But I don't understand how Spider-Man No Way Home gets nominated for visual effects. Uh, that's pff, beyond me. Just want to say that I got a new subscriber right now. Donata Coat, subscribe to your channel. I don't know if she's subscribed because she's looking at the live stream right now. Um, it might be from another video, but I just want to give a shout out. Thank you, Donata Coat, for subscribing to the channel. And if you were trying to keep it low key, I apologize. <laughs> Okay, here we go with uh, Tony Hawk. I prefer Roger Moore. You know, when it comes to James Bond, I think Sean Connery is the best James Bond, but the best, like, set of movies is the Roger Moore movies. Uh, I do like Daniel Craig as James Bond. I think he's probably the third best James Bond, in my opinion. And uh, then probably Pierce Bronson and everything after that is a crap shoot. But uh, Fuzz Aldrin, who would you want to see be James Bond? Like, who? what's a name? Like, a lot of people are floating around the idea of uh, Idris Elba, which I, I wouldn't mind at all. I think he'd make a good Bond. Um, oh, 
Also, guys, who's your favorite Bond villain? Ash Ventura says Pierce is his favorite Bond. Uh, the thing is, Pierce could have been a lot better had he been given better movies. It's just a set of movies other than Goldeneye. They're kind of weird. They're kind of outdated, you know? Uh, Die Another Day has a fucking... Yeah, Die Another Day came out when, like, extreme sports were popular. Like, back when, I guess, Tony Hawk was popular and all that stuff. It just felt so weird to see, like, Bond kite surf and all that stuff. Um, yeah. My favorite Bond movie. What, what's my favorite? I, I really like Thunderball. And, uh... Goldfinger! <laughs> Fuzz Aldrin! <laughs> uh, I want to kill the franchise, so what about Jodie Turner-Smith? Um, who is Jodie Turner-Smith? I'm just laughing because putting a woman would kill the franchise, Turner-Smith. Oh, uh, she's from Queen and Slim. Um, I will say, though, a lot of people were giving Bond shit because uh, people thought the the black girl was going to take the place of James Bond, and I've, I feel like they handled that really well. They, she didn't replace James Bond. But she was still a very uh, competent character. Um, I, I didn't like No Time for to Die, but that wasn't a reason why I didn't like it. I didn't like No Time for to Die because it really felt like a Marvel movie. There was like weird quips and shit like that, and I, I thought like the death it was just a little cheap. It, it, it wasn't really set up. It was just kind of like thrown at you. Like oh, I feel bad. Uh, but other than that, who would I want it? Yeah, I I, don't, I really don't think a female James Bond would work. Like, Bond is the male fantasy. It's about a guy who travels the world, has sex with beautiful women, kills people, plays poker, drinks. It's very much the male fantasy. And uh, you can't just take it and put it with a woman. Because you lose that essence of Bond, in my opinion. Um, I think the Broccoli family who owns... Uh, James Bond, well, at least 50% of James Bond. They're smart enough to know that. Um, Amazon, who owns the other 50% of Bond, is probably not as smart, but I think the the Broccoli family will hold strong. They, they probably don't... I don't even think the Broccoli family wants a black Bond, to be honest. I think a black Bond can work. Um, it, Idris Elba, for example, would be good as Bond, in my opinion. But I don't think a female Bond can work, just because it is the male fantasy... And that's one thing I want the movies to do going forward. I want it to be, like, more masculine. Because Daniel Craig, he wasn't as much as a macho man as Roger Moore or Sean Connery especially. I want them to bring it back to Sean Connery. Maybe even have it take place in that era. Take place in the 60s and 70s. Have the hairy chest, the hairy arms, the big brute. Um, I, I want to see James Bond go more masculine than go more feminine. Um... They killed James Bond first time he died in a movie. I get that, but it's just like, I know that... J I, it's probably because I had prior knowledge going into the movie that Daniel Craig was no longer interested in being Bond. So uh, it didn't feel like it surprised me. It kind of felt like, well, we're going to have to reboot the franchise anyway. Now's the time to kill Bond. kind of felt cheap and lazy to me. And uh, I wish they would have went down the path of like what they did with Logan. Because Logan is so tonally different from all the other X-Men and Wolverine movies. And that feels like a conclusion. But No Time to Die just felt like, oh, we'll have like a normal Bond movie, but we'll have it so he dies at the end. Instead of like leading up to his death like the movie Logan. <laughs> I miss playing James Bond on N69. <laughs> I think you meant to write N64 there, bud, but... uh um, I didn't grow up with an N64. My first console was a Wii, so I wouldn't know. Uh, 
I was born at the time GameCube was big, but my parents never wanted me to get a uh, get a GameCube. And so I, I got a Wii when I was older. Wii kind of slaps. I know Wii gets a bad rap, but I fucking loved Wii. It was a good console. It slapped. Um, I just got an ad for a Capagliflozin. Um, yeah, not the <laughs> poor Capagliflozin. Basically, that drug. Why am I talking about pharmacy stuff? It's boring to you guys. Ash Ventura loves Logan. Logan is probably the best superhero movie to come out. I think Logan is the best superhero movie that came out probably since Spider-Man 2. I think that's a fair enough assessment. N64, he corrected himself. It's okay. N69 sounds a little funner, if you know what I mean. Uh, Fuzz Aldrin says, I wish No Time to Die was similar to Taken. And uh, John Wick. I especially agree with the Taken. I wanted it to be like... Because Taken, the first Taken movie, I know it's like a meme right now, but the first Taken movie was super dark and like really disgusting. It was about human trafficking. It was just like a very dark movie. And it was about an aging badass uh, until you got Taken 2 and 3, which weren't about the badass as much. But... Uh, Lauren says, hey, Lauren, thanks for joining in. Lauren is a frequent commenter on this channel. Oh, my hair. What's going on with my hair? All right. Lauren says, the show hasn't even started yet, and you almost already have a bingo. I know. Um, <laughs> it is what it is. Guys, uh, I don't think the Oscars are learning from their mistakes. I don't, there's way too many musical numbers in the Oscars. Uh, you need to cut this all out. I didn't even see it in Kanto, so I'm watching this and I'm just like, Pleh. you know what I mean? Thanks for tuning in, Lauren. <laughs> Lauren says, I'm screaming, I just realized it said Academy Awards. Um, I want to let you know, Lauren, I put as much time and effort uh, into making my title and as it took to make the Oscars. Um, I went as far as to use the very world-renowned font Comic Sans, so it is what it is. <laughs> Not gonna lie, this song kinda slaps. I'm never going to watch in Canto, but right now the song is slapping. Lauren says, you're welcome. Just finished washing the dishes. I hope you had a fun time washing the dishes. That's one of the few chores I don't mind doing is washing the dishes. The one I hate doing. The worst chore, the one that feels like it was made by the spawn of Satan, is folding laundry. I hate folding laundry. That's like the one thing I can't do in life. It's such like a monotonous chore to me. I'll wash dishes 20,000 times before I'll fucking do laundry or fold laundry. I usually just throw it all in a basket and shuffle my way through it. Ash Ventura says this song though. Yeah, this is a good song. I'll admit it. It's better than the Beyonce song, dare I say. Uh, Lauren says it's not Hadestone they can keep it. If it's not 
Hadestown, they can keep it. I saw it. I saw it, and it deserves them. What's Hadestown? Let me just look that up, Lauren. Um, oh, okay, so it's a musical. I'm not a big musical guy. I don't really know my musical. Uh, Hadestown. Damn. Did you see this live, uh, Hadestown? Like on Broadway or something? Fuzz Aldrin. Imagine a Bond movie that was cool visuals, but incoherent storyline and mind-bending sci-fi. Oops, they made that one already. It's called Tenet. <laughs> oh, you know, when you think about it, everyone's saying like, oh, I wish there was a black James Bond. I really wish there was a black James Bond. And Tenet was basically black James Bond, and literally no one went to see it. So, uh, yeah, people who want a black James Bond, uh, Kind of didn't show up to that one. It kind of makes you look bad. Uh, but yeah. I I want a black James Bond if a black James Bond is the best actor to play James Bond. So I don't necessarily want a black James Bond, but I'll take it if that's the best James. I want the best James Bond is what I'm saying. Uh, Lauren, putting away clothes is legit satanic. Uh, yeah, it's satanic. Lauren says, yes, I saw it. Are you referring to uh, Encanto, or are you referring to uh, Logan or Tenet? We're talking a lot about a lot of movies right now. I didn't see any of the animated movies, so I can't even judge this category. I was about to watch Flea, but there was a movie that was really similar to Flea that came out a few years ago. It was called Waltz with Bashir. Fantastic movie. Um... Uh, Waltz with Bashir, if you guys haven't seen that movie, it's a documentary, but the events were so traumatic to the subjects that they had to recreate it through animation. It's such a striking movie. If you haven't seen the movie Waltz with Bashir, I have a review on my channel. It's in my review of Last Duel. I reviewed Last Duel in another movie. Um, yeah, watch Waltz with Bashir. It's one of the greatest documentaries, in my opinion. Uh, a really striking movie. Encanto won for uh, Best Animated Movie. Um, I won't count it as a shameless Disney plug. Lauren says, Walter Care Theater. It was so good. I've Okay, so she's talking about Hatestown, my bad. Uh, Walter Care Theater. It was so good. I flew to NYC back in September. The music is immaculate, and there's few breakdowns on YouTube if you don't want to shell out 100 Well, it's not that I don't want to shell out 150 bucks. It's that I live in Quebec, which is like a French place. Um, oh, Pure Hangout, you're right. That was a shameless Disney plug. They had three Disney princesses presenting. That is a shameless Disney plug. Uh, I'm going to put that one. Thank you, Pure Hangout. He's playing, <laughs> he's paying more attention than me. We were kind of talking about James Bond and uh, Hadestown and a bunch of other stuff. Um, but that's kind of, I think this live stream was a good idea because the Oscars aren't that much about movies, but this live, oh, fucking Anthony Hopkins is there. <laughs> there goes that one. Uh, let me, uh, mark it down. This one is definitely not happening, which is a shame. It could have been a bingo, but this one is not happening. Anyway, uh, what were we talking about? Uh, we were talking about so much stuff. But thank you, Pure Hangout, for pointing that one out. That was definitely a, a Disney plug. Um, I, I, the fact that Encanto won is probably a Disney plug itself, but the fact that the people... I, I don't know Disney enough to know that they're Disney princesses, and I wasn't really listening because I was talking. It's hard to do both. Yeah, Pure Hangout, great, Pure Hangout, great one, Ash Ventura says. Uh, Lauren... So yeah, uh, back to what I was saying about Lauren. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about hate sound. I live in Quebec, so it's really hard to watch musicals and stuff like that. Um, probably if I lived in Montreal, it would be easier. But I live like about two hours away from Montreal. And most of the time, I'm living in Maine, bro. Maine is dead. You think there's musicals going on in Maine? I can't even catch movies in Maine. I have to like drive... Guys, I hope you appreciate it. Some of the film reviews I do... Like, I reviewed Licorice Pizza over on my channel. I had to drive two hours just to watch that movie. 
I drove two hours to the cinema and drove back in the middle of a, a snowstorm. So, uh, yeah. Persepolis is better than Flea. Okay, I didn't see Flea, but Fuzz Aldrin. Thank you so much. Persepolis is such a great movie, and I, I read the comic as well. The comic is really good, and uh, just like we were talking about at the beginning of the show, I was talking about movies that took the panels of a, of a comic book and used it as a, as a storyboard for the movie. That's exactly what Persepolis did. I, I really like the movie Persepolis. It's been a while since I watched it. I watched it back when it was first released, but uh, yeah. Lauren in Canto winning is not surprising. My students love that movie and sing that Bruno song. I saw it and I was slightly impressed. Well, uh, yeah, the Bruno. Oh, okay, that song they sang is the Bruno song. I haven't seen the movie. Uh, okay, Lauren, you, m maybe you can back me up on this because you have pretty based opinions on things. Um, I feel like right now, um, how can I say this? If you guys have ever been to Epcot, if you guys go to Epcot, the amusement park that's Disney, you have like the Canada land, and then you have like the Mexico land, and then you have like Scandinavia land or whatever. You just like, it's like checking out the boxes of like this country, this country, this country. I feel like Disney animated movies are kind of just doing that, where they're checking the boxes of countries without putting much thought into the story. It's like they have Luca come out of it. Luca, Italy, Encanto. I don't know where Encanto takes place, but it seems to be Latin America. Check the box. Um, yeah, it's always like checking the boxes. It's like this nationality, this nationality, this nationality. Uh, and it feels like they're like just like, let's make a movie about Canada. They did that with Turning Red. But they're not like, what's like a good story to tell? It's like the nationality or the country of origin is like the first thought, and then they like build a story around it. But when you look at those those early Pixar movies, like it felt like it was story first, and then they built a universe around it. Now I feel like they're doing the opposite. That's just my weird um, opinion on things. Um, good Lord, my drive is like 25 minutes. Uh, Angelica shows more uh, Arthas films but they show them at my local AMC. Yeah, my, well, I have a cinema in my hometown, but uh, they mostly play, like, Marvel movies and whatever the big thing is. It's not a big theater. So if I want to catch something like Licorice Pizza or uh, what's another one I had to drive out for? I really want to see Parallel Mothers. I missed that one, but it was playing far away. That's why. Anything that's, like, remotely artistic... I have to drive uh, two hours to go see. There was another movie I had to drive really far. But I'm, ba I'm back in Canada right now, and here it's way better because uh, the city I'm in right now is quadruple the size of the one I live in back in Maine. So, Ash Ventura, yeah, I, I feel you about that. Yeah. Uh, Fuzz Aldrin, uh, have you seen The Lost City of Z? That's one I didn't see, and my dad, I think, saw that movie and told me to watch it. Um, no, I haven't seen that one. Is it? Tell me more about it, Fuzz Aldrin. Try to convince me to watch it. Uh, Encanto didn't have anything Colombian going on in the movie. That's what I mean, yeah, okay. Encanto didn't have anything Colombian going on in the movie. It could have uh, been about bugs and the story would have uh, been the same. But that's kind of what's lacking. It's kind of what I felt with Black Panther. Because everyone was talking about Black Panther. It's like, oh, it's such a good African, like, homage. And I, I went in expecting more. But then you have, like, The Weeknd and Kendrick Lamar music. And half the movie takes place in Korea. And it's like, I wish they kind of developed the world a bit more, kind of. Uh, uh, when they did Lilo and Stitch, uh, Ash Ventura says, uh, Hawaiian. Yeah, exactly. That's another... But Lilo and Stitch is a fantastic movie. There was, like, a weird period in Disney's filmography uh, where, like, the 2D animation was getting phased out and they were just throwing whatever at the wall to see what sticks. They made, like, a shitty, like, cow movie. Home on the Range, was it called? 
Uh, yeah, and and Lilo and Stitch was kind of one of those movies, but that one ended up actually being good on like that shitty farm movie. But uh, yeah, it was just such a different Disney movie. It was about like Hawaii, Hawaiian, and it was like aliens going on. But it was such an amazing movie. It's such a great movie. So much emotion. I I I used to cry when I was a kid watching Lilo and Stitch. You'd be like, I'm lost. I'm lost. It was like the duckling. Uh, my favorite story about Canada. <laughs> uh, Fuzz Aldrin says my favorite story about Canada is the Freedom Truckers. Um, that was kind of crazy because when you think about it, uh, it was such like a story but a non-story at the same time. Like I don't understand how it got so much international attention. Well, I know why because it's kind of funny that it was truckers and they were blocking. I get it, but it's like anti-vaccine protests and anti-mandates protests have been going on all over the world but for some reason uh the one in canada was such a huge meme it got international attention i don't get canadian news when i'm in america but i heard about that one all right so uh yeah like say what you will uh, they have the right to protest in my opinion i'm not going to say whether i agree or disagree with it uh, I, I like keeping my politics to myself but i do believe they have the right to protest um i don't think anyone's arguing about that Uh, Ash, yeah, I love it. Ash Ventura's talking about Lilo and Stitch. It is a fantastic movie. Um, they're talking about, uh, here they're talking about Drive My Car. And it, have you guys in the chat, did you guys see Drive My Car? Because I wasn't that big into it. Is there something maybe I missed? Um, I watched the whole thing. It's a three-hour movie. It was pretty long. And, uh, I, I, it's not that I didn't like it. It's just that somewhere in there, there's a good two-hour movie. Um, Uh, Lauren says, art house equals art house. She was writing it like a pretentious person. Ah, uh, I see what, art house, art house. It sounds more like a German thing. Lost City of Z is the under scene and it was amazing. It's about a man trying to find El Dorado City of Gold. I'm going to add that to my, I have a good uh, little list. I'm going to put it in the chat actually. Uh, Fuzz Aldrin is putting a lot of good movie recommendations. I'm going to throw them in the chat in one second here. Oh man, kind of looks bad, but you the movies are RRR, uh, compartment number six. I can't pronounce the third one in Lost City of Z. Those are movies that uh, uh, Fuzz Aldrin is recommending. I think it's starting to glitch. Too many people in the house using the Wi-Fi. Tell me if the live stream is not working. Hopefully the live stream is still working. It's just a little glitchy uh, for my uh, Oscar watching. Uh, Black Panther was giving fictional African uh, d diaspora things. What's the diaspora? I, I'm going to have to Urban Dictionary that one. Diaspora. diaspora is a scattered population whose origin lies in separate geographic locale. I see what you mean now. Okay. I'm not much of a social scientist. Um, so Black Panther was giving fictional African uh, diaspora's thing. Other than that, it was just Disney throwing us a bone. Exactly how I feel about it. It was just like... It felt very, uh, but like I said, it's like it, half of the movie took place in Korea. They go to Korea after a while. It didn't really feel like Africa to me. And I remember Terry Gilliam, 
uh, the director Terry Gilliam, who made great movies like Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas and Brazil. He he talked about that too. He, oh no, was it him? Yeah, it was either him or Gaspar Noé. Uh, they talked about how they saw it and they're like, "This isn't Africa," just because the music didn't feel African. Um, there's an artist I like. Uh, let me just look her up because I, I don't want to mispronounce her name. So, like, there's this artist I like that does, like, uh, I, she's, a f anyway, it, it just would have been so much better if they had, like, uh, African music instead of Kendrick Lamar music. I'm, I love Kendrick Lamar so much, but it's, like, as far as fit in a movie, I would have loved to have more African music, more percussions. I think like if you would have changed the music, it would have went out a whole point in my head. Just have more, like, African music. There's so many talented... I, I'm not going to try to <laughs> be a white savior right now, but um, I have a friend, she's from Cameroon, and whenever I go to her house, she's playing African music, and that shit low-key slaps. And I'm like, why couldn't they use stuff like this in Black Panther instead of, like, The Weeknd and Anderson Pack? It's like, what do they have to do with anything? Well said, Ash Ventura, with the flex. I saw Drive My Car. The film is about love and loss. The film kept my attention for three hours. I wish I was on that boat, man, because it's the kind of movie I wish I liked, but I don't know. It was just so slow to me. Um, adding them to my watch list, Lauren says, uh, in reference to Fuzz Aldrin. I'm definitely going to check these movies out. I'm in my last semester of school. Uh, I'm gonna, f I gotta find some new ways to waste that time that I could have spent doing, uh, assignments. Uh, that's what Lauren says. Lauren, I thought you were, a so I thought you were a teacher right now, you said in the chat. So you still have school to do while you're teaching? Um, I low-key hope John Travolta makes a scene. Oh, that would be the funniest one. That's the one I... That and Nicole Kidman Drinch Fingers are the one I hope happens the most. Uh, surprisingly, no pipeline talk so far. Uh, I was sure that was going to happen, but... Um, and I was hoping to another Oscar flub back when Woody uh, Harrelson was saying that he was baked and he was going to read the envelope. I was like, oh, another Oscar flub, another Oscar flub. Um, I low-key hope John Travolta makes a scene. Yeah, uh, I went over that one. Uh, Low Afrobeat is the official name for their music. Um, don't worry, I don't have a pitchfork. <laughs> don't worry, I don't have a pitchfork Gen Z girl. Dude, you have no clue. Like, sometimes I'm on my channel. Lauren, I don't know if you were subscribed to my channel at the time, but back when I did, uh, back when I did a review for Harry Potter movies, I did, like, a Harry Potter movie review marathon, where I, like, went over every Harry Potter movie and, uh, talked about what I was, uh, what I thought, and, uh, one of the Harry Potter movies, like, just randomly had a black actor replace, um, what, Crabbing Boyle, one of them. Anyway, so I'm talking about this, and some guy in the comments, I, I refer to him as the random black guy, because you're watching this movie, it takes place in Hogwarts, which is like a sea of white people, and there's one black actor, so obviously I'm going to refer to the unknown black actor as the black actor because he's in a sea of white people. Like if I was watching like, I don't know, uh, Friday <laughs> or like a Tyler Perry movie or something and there was one white actor, I'd call him the white guy. But it just so ha Anyway, I referred to him as the black guy. And I was like, why did they replace Crab and Goyle with the random black guy, I said. And some... He was white, the guy who commented this. He unleashed on me unleashed i thought i was gonna get canceled <laughs> oh, dude he fucking tore me a new asshole and uh i usually like laugh comments off i i low-key think they're funny most of the time like there was one video i did where i wore a shirt that was really small and everyone in the comments is just roasting my fucking shirt um yeah to be like oh dude what the fuck is up with you? it's the spenny video when back when i interviewed spenny uh, from Kenny versus Betty. Everyone roasted my shirt. And I, I was laughing at that shit. I was like, dude, that shirt is fucking ugly. What was I thinking? Uh, but yeah, that guy tore me a new asshole with that uh, comment. Uh, just saying, you're racist, uh, and stuff like that. 
just because I called the guy the random black guy because he's in a Harry Potter movie. It was obviously a diversity cast. It was just like, oh, throwing random black guy a diversity higher. Um, yeah. Anyway, ever since that happened, I'm like, eek, 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 walking on eggshells, you know? <laughs> oh, I knew this guy was going to win. So I'm happy for that one. I thought he did a fantastic job. I didn't like the movie Coda. I know Lauren liked it. Uh, she commented that she really liked the movie, but I wasn't that big into it. But I thought he was amazing, and I'm really happy for him. Uh, Lauren says, Yes, undergrad. I'm an after-school teacher, and I, have inter ha and I have an internship where I case manage elementary kids. I'm not a teacher because our education system is ass. But, dude, um... Well, first of all, I have a friend who teaches in New York and says it can be a lucrative career. I don't know if that's the uh, path you're going down. Uh, but whatever you're doing, I'm not sure what you're doing, if it's like some kind of psychology thing or sociology thing or education thing. But, dude, Lauren, you got some pretty cool opinions. You're pretty fun to have on the channel. I, I always look forward to reading your comments. So uh, what I, I'm sure those kids think you're fucking based. Um, Ash Ventura's laughing his ass off at my Harry Potter story, I guess. <laughs> uh, uh, Ash Ventura says, what was the shirt? The shirt was just, it was an Abercrombie and Fitch t-shirt, which, guys, if you know me, I have no sense of fashion in me. Like, I have no clue what fashion is. And I was wearing Abercrombie and Fitch. And in Canada, like, people don't give a shit about fashion. At least when I grew up, uh, Ash Ventura is probably proving me wrong, but when I grew up, no one cared about, like, oh, you're wearing The Gap or you're wearing uh, uh, Old Navy or whatever. They didn't care. So I was wearing an Abercrombie and Fitch t-shirt, and everyone's like, Abercrombie and Fitch? What are you, a preppy high school student? And I'm like, what the fuck? It's, it wasn't even my shirt. It was, like, probably one of my siblings' shirt, probably my brother's shirt. So, uh, but it was really small on me. That was the problem with it. It, was, it almost looked like a crop top. Uh, <laughs> uh, Lauren, they don't flesh out black characters enough to give them a name. Lauren, exactly what I was thinking. It's like, if you just take a character who's black and you throw in the movie, um, just to say we have a black guy. Well, I don't know who that is, so I'm just going to call him random black guy. Um, th that's exactly my thought process. It's like, what's another movie where they did that? Um, like, a, a movie that did that, but actually, well, is back when the original Star Wars movies came out, uh, people complained that the, uh, uh, that the first movie didn't have enough black people in it, and they're trying to, like, open up to black people, because black people didn't really like Star Wars at the time, and, uh, they put Lando in the movie, and Lando is a great character. No one calls Lando the random black guy in Star Wars. They call him Lando. Uh, but in that Harry Potter movie, yeah, it was random black guy. Uh, so... It is what it is. Uh, I call them random names, too. Lol, black folks didn't even watch Harry Potter, so the casting director was really on one. <laughs> exactly. Uh, next, Fuzz Aldrin. Troy Coatser top, bottom, unbutton is a wardrobe malfunction. Uh, who's Troy Coat? Oh, this guy here is... Uh, I don't count that. No, okay, I, I just saw what you're talking about. Um, no, I, the closest one, I almost had a gender norm bending outfit. I think Timothy Chalamet's outfit is pretty gender norm bending. Back me up, guys. Uh, Lauren says, I'm only 22, but I watch media that had token black girls because now they have no token black girl, and it's all biracials. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to step my foot in that one. That's some dangerous territory. But uh, you know what's a movie I watched recently that had a token black girl? was uh, it, I watched a movie. It was a fairly recent movie, and the girl was like kind of like light-skinned black, but they had her like paint her skin more black. It was I, It was Clueless. Was it Clueless? It had, like, a token black girl in it, but they had the girl, like, really kind of, like, darken her makeup, and it became a controversy later on. 
But uh, my si- I watched Clueless with my sister recently for the first time, and I noticed that. I was like, ooh, that's not a good look. Uh, I'm hollering, not them dragging you, your too small crop top. Lauren, if you want to laugh, go see that, that video. If you go on my channel and look at popular uploads, there's a video called Spencer Rice Interview, The Legacy of Kenny vs. Penny. Just watch the beginning of that video. You're going to laugh your ass off. I'm fucking wearing an Abercrombie crop top. <laughs> Space between our houses. I'm surprised the John Travolta box hasn't been checked off yet. Dude, I'm same here. I want an Adina Menzel level. Again, if we get... I will be happy if tonight we either get a John Travolta makes a scene or a Nicole Kidman Grinch fingers. I want a Nicole Kidman Grinch fingers. Uh, Fuzz Aldrin. Yep, Timothy outfit is girly. Okay, let's check it then. I'm not the only one here. Uh, yeah, I don't want it. Yeah, just fucking do it. It is a little girly. We're checking it. Alright, there we go. I said I wasn't going to count, like, a girl wearing a pantsuit because that's not really gender norm bending. Uh, what is Charlo- <laughs> what is Charlemagne wearing? For a second, I thought you were talking about Charlemagne the podcaster, Charlemagne the god. Uh, no, you're talking about Timothy Chalamet. Uh, yeah, it is a weird outfit. Uh, Fuzz Aldrin, Evan Hansen. Evan Hansen got a token black girl. I haven't seen Evan Hansen. Fuzz Aldrin, this guy, he comes in my chat. He's like, I don't watch these American movies. Fuck that shit. And all of a sudden, he's watching Dear Evan Hansen, which looks like the bottom of the barrel American movie. Uh, I think uh, Fuzz Aldrin has the same problem as me. We're both angry watchers. Sometimes we'll watch a movie just to piss ourselves off. It's like an angry watch kind of thing. I can kind of respect the hustle. Uh... Lauren says, Timothy's outfit looks fine. I don't think it counts. His chin is too strong, though. I love me a Vanilla King, but the bicycle seat face is... <laughs> I love me a Vanilla King, but the bicycle seat faces are horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> that new Robin from Titans. Blech. I'm gonna Google the Titan from uh, Robin from Titans. Uh, Robin Titans. <laughs> that is a fucking bicycle seat case. <laughs> Wowie. <we? laughs> Let's get. <laughs> All right. Blah. All right. Tiffany Haddish is here. Um, didn't she get a DUI recently? Yikes. I think Tiffany Haddish is low-key attractive. Um, <clears throat> going... All right, I didn't say that. Ignore me. Uh... Somebody should Photoshop Nicole Kidman's fingers to be t Tiny Timothy Chalamet's. <laughs> that would be a good... I, I might do that one later. I have some Photoshop skills. Uh, if you guys haven't seen on my channel, I do kind of these short sketch videos where I do Photoshop and I'll Photoshop people's faces on like... like I did one where it was like... I don't know if you guys saw this, but it was Anna Lynn McCord and she said uh, that she, she wants to be baby Putin's mom. So I took Putin's face and photoshopped it on a baby and had her raise Putin. That's a video over on my channel. It's a short. What is she talking about, Tiffany Haddish? Tiffany Haddish is doing jokes about how she goes for Canadian men. 
And it's just like saying a bunch of stereotypes like, oh, I think it's so sexy how they ride on moose. And I'm like, bruh, uh, you're a little lost, Tiffany Haddish. Um, still attractive. But... Uh, space between our hair. Okay, I went over that one. Lauren, Timothy has on blazer pants set with sequin floral applique. Ap applique. It's not that girl. Okay, I'll take it off. I think uh, Lauren is more convincing in her arguments than uh, Fuzz, so I'll take it off. You won me. You won me, Lauren. There we go. You know what? I, I am convinced because Lauren just made me howl in laughter, so. <laughs> Bicycle seat. <laughs> That's some good shit. Uh... Buzz Aldrin said, I saw the Broadway musical show of Evan Hall. Ah, I see. Okay. That makes more sense. But I do like to hate watch shit, so. Fuzz Aldrin, Tiffany Haddish and Aquafina got the same tone of voice. That's one of those controversies that actually pissed me off, was when everyone got on Aquafina's case for doing black voice. And that, to me, it's like she's not doing black voice. That's what people from New York kind of sound like. I don't know, maybe I don't have, like, a good ear for it because I'm Canadian and, like, accents. But I never thought Aquafina was doing a black voice. Um, or at least not, like, emulating it or doing it out of parody or something. So, I don't know. I, I really didn't like the Aquafina black voice. Because it's, like, even if, like, growing up, like, I don't, like, my dad doesn't have, like, a heavy Quebecois accent because my dad's English. But when I speak French, I have, like, a really thick Québécois accent because that's just how my friends sound. Like, they sound very Québécois. And they, hey, look. Hey, look. It's fair, look. Hey, tabarouette. That's how we talk, you know? Uh, and my dad doesn't sound at all like that when he speaks French. So, like, sometimes you learn accents through the environment you're around. Um, yeah. Could be that. I I'm just saying. Because, like, my French accent is nothing like my dad's French accent. Um, I don't sound, even when I speak English, I don't really sound like my parents. Uh, I say mo terms like dank, based, red-pilled. My dad doesn't say that. Uh, my mom is from Syria. She doesn't talk like that. So, like, sometimes, like, the environment you grow up in, uh, it just makes you sound what, like what you are. And sometimes the internet makes it more of, like, a global community and everyone kind of sounds alike. So, uh, I Aquafina, you can say what you will about her, but I, I don't fault her for the black accent controversy. There we go. We got Ukraine virtue signaling. I stand with Ukraine. Is that a Ukraine reference she did? I was kind of half paying attention. Should I check that one? I'm not sure. It was a borderline Ukraine one. Should I count it, guys? Okay, I, that's what I thought it was. I was kind of half paying attention, my bad. It is a Ukraine reference that Mila Kunis did. I'm going to count it. We still got a lot of time, folks, to get a bingo. Let's not get too antsy just yet. Um, I think they're going to bring up the pipeline. If Don't look up win something, which would check this box. Uh, it would definitely check the pipeline box as well, because I'm pretty sure during their speech they're going to talk about Ukraine. Uh, 
Uh, the space between our houses. I was really hoping for more, a more major implosion this year. Lol. Yeah, you know what? I was I was really expecting a major implosion as well. I thought when they announced that Tony Hawk was presenting an award, I thought he was gonna skateboard on stage and and same with Sean White. Like I was really expecting that to happen, low key. Like I thought they'd be that cringy about it, but I think it was just I was overly cynical going in. Um, yeah, I was a little cynical going in, and that's what usually happens. I go in super cynical to things, and then it ends up not being. Th that's what happened when I watched King Richard recently. I was expecting the worst movie ever, and it kind of ended up not being the worst movie ever. So I was like, ah, sure. Uh, this girl's doing a really good job, by the way. Is that only me? What, what movie is her song from? Anyway. There we go. All right, I just got the Ukraine thing. I'm on a bit of a delay here, but yeah. I'm really happy the Oscars are here to tell me that Ukraine is an important issue. I stand... They literally... <laughs> they used my words exactly, too. They used the hashtag stand with Ukraine. I literally wrote on my bingo card stand with Ukraine word for word. So, I mean, that's the name of the hashtag. I get it, but <laughs> it is what it is. Uh, Fuzz Aldrin, it's early. Somebody will make another uh, Ukraine comment. Uh, I think that was from a while ago. Uh, Fuzz Aldrin... Uh, Fuzz Aldrin, did you see the Ice T twi Twitter comment about being robbed? No, I haven't. I'm gonna look that up right now during the commercial break. Uh, Ice T Twitter. I didn't even know Ice T was still alive, to be honest. <laughs> uh, I think I got him mixed up with uh, what was the name of the one who was with Ice Cube. Uh, I was robbed at a gas station in New Jersey last night. After my hands stopped trembling, I managed to call the cops, and they were quick to respond and calmed me down. Uh, my money is gone. The police asked me if I knew who did it. I said yes. It was pump number nine. I don't get what he's saying. Pump number nine. I don't get what he's talking about. Can you explain it to me, Fuzz Aldrin? Uh, Lauren says, Lo, y'all remember Vanessa Hudgens saying, I'm sorry, it's a virus. I get it. I respect it in response to lockdowns. She's a freaking legend. Uh, are you telling me that Vanessa Hudgens is low-key based? <laughs> What's Vanessa Hudgens been up to? Because uh, last thing I saw her in was Spring Breakers. Is that the last thing I saw her in? I think my dad was watching a TV show and she was in it. I feel like everyone's orders on orders to be on their best behavior. Mute really makes me miss the days. That Matt Stone and Trey Parker got all dolled up. <laughs> that was one of the legendary uh, moments. So with, for those of you who don't know, there was one year where uh, Matt Stone and Trey Parker showed up to the Oscars high off their asses on LSD. And, uh, oh, Fuzz Aldrin's just reminding me she was in Tick, Tick, Boom. That's right. Uh, she was in Tick, Tick, Boom. But I didn't really like Tick, Tick, Boom. Uh, anyway, back to the Matt Stone and Trey Parker incident. Uh, that was really something else, like, when they showed up really high on LSD in, in drag. Uh, there was also that one time where Sasha Baron Cohen was dressed as the dictator, and he had the ashes of Kim Jong-il in an urn, 
and he spilled the ashes of Kim Jong-il in an urn. Uh, he spilt it all over uh, Brian Seacrest, and he got friggin' pissed, and Sasha Baron Cohen got kicked out of the Oscars for it. Um, that was perfect. And it's like, yeah, it's like it became more tame after that. Um, it's because all these people, they're trying to go into the Hollywood It Club, you know? Uh, they're all trying to be with the cool kids. Like, you ever notice, like, Jonah Hill, he used to do all these comedies. Now he's just, like, doing, like, Moneyball and, uh, what was that? Don't Look Up he was in recently. And it's like, he's a... And then Seth Rogen, same thing. He used to be, like, in you know, all of these raunchy comedies. Then his last movie was... What was that? Santa movie? Uh... Yeah, that sucked. Uh, I watched Santa Inc. just to review it on my channel. It was not good. Um, and then he did, like, the Steve Jobs movie. He was actually good in the Steve Jobs movie. They're all good. But it's like, everyone's trying to be in the Hollywood hit club, you know? They're all trying to sit at the cool table. And sometimes you got to learn you're not going to necessarily be one of the cool kids. Um, but that's just the reality they live in. Uh, I was robbed at a guest. So he's talking about the tweet. Uh... But yeah, I, I know the tweet, but it's just, I don't know what he's saying. It was pump number nine. The police asked me if I knew who did it. I said, yes, it was pump number nine. I don't know what that means, pump number nine. Oh, he's talking about the gas prices. It just fucking clicked. <laughs> That's actually a pretty based comment. Uh... I get it now. Gas prices are so high, it's robbery. Okay, I don't know why my brain is, like, in slow motion right now. It took a while for it to click. My bad, guys. Uh, wowee. Vanessa Hudgens was in Tick, Tick, Boom. Yeah, that she was in Tick, Tick, Boom. I just remembered that. Uh, yeah. Did you guys like Tick, Tick, Boom? Because I really wasn't that big into it. I, I, I have a tough time with musicals where it... The part that Tick Tick Boom really lost me is when they did the I love you when you know me that I love her in the Bapu. It was like, oh, that's like the one thing I can't stand in musicals when they get like that. Uh, musicals like uh, West Side Story and uh, In the Heights I liked. Uh, those don't mind me, but when it gets too Broadway and be Bapu, it's like it loses me. Oh. <laughs> the gas here uh, hasn't been bad. It's 3.75 and I use mid. Damn. In Canada, it's wild. <laughs> you don't want to be in Canada, Lauren. I'm, I'm driving back to America, and it's like a four-hour drive, and I'm dreading filling the gas pump. Uh, I, I don't want to see that number. I'm going to hide my eyes when I see that number. Uh, <laughs> no more two-hour drives to the theater uh, with your prices <laughs> and with these prices. That's a fact there, Fuzz. Um... My friend lives in another town. He lives in that town that I said was two hours away, and I'm helping him move, so I might catch a movie while I help him move. But uh, other than that, yeah. And there's nothing good in cinemas right now anyway. I don't really care. So, uh, yeah, I'm moving to Toronto in September. Uh, I can't wait, because Toronto's a big film city. I can't wait. Uh, yeah. I will no longer live in Maine. I'm moving to Toronto. I went from Quebec to Maine to Toronto. Uh, is this the girl who won? This girl who won costume design. Is this the same girl who won for Mad Max? No, that's not her. I don't think so. It's just another old white lady. <laughs> uh, Vanessa Hudgens is crazy. She let Austin Butler slip away from her. I don't know anything about celebrity uh, drama, but uh, who's Austin Butler? That name rings a bell. Austin Butler. Austin Butler, like, if I bring out my inner bi, which I'm not really bisexual, but uh, he kind of looks a little too metro for my taste. Um, I don't know. 
Austin Butler, he's gonna play Elvis. Yeah, he's the guy from the Elvis movie. He played uh, in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Yeah, I, I think Vanessa Hudgens can actually do better. Just going based on looks, I think Vanessa Hudgens can do better than uh, Austin Butler. I like Tick, Tick, Boom because of the story behind it. Yeah, I mean, that's probably the most interesting thing, but it almost made me wish I was just watching it more. It was really just, like, the heightened moments, and it's not... I'm not faulting the movie for it. It's more, like, my fault because it's just a thing I can't do as musicals, like, when it gets too Broadway-y like that, uh, which... Uh, I was expecting them to do a Steven Soddenheim tribute here because there was Tick, Tick, Boom that came out, and uh, what was the other... Sodenheim thing that came out. Oh, West Side Story. I think he uh, wrote West Side Story. So I was. I thought they'd maybe do a tribute to him, but... If you guys hear too much noise in the background, let me know. Uh, I like Tick, Tick, Boom because... I, okay, I want to... Oh, Lord, not spelling tick like tick. Uh, <laughs> you're, a, you're a little TikToker now, eh? <laughs> Um, isn't Toronto insanely expensive? Yeah, it is, but, uh, uh, Lauren, I said it at the beginning of the live stream, so basically my story is that, uh, back when I was an undergrad, I was studying film, and, uh, I was studying film, and I was studying, uh, uh, pharmacy, and now I, I finished my doctorate program in pharmacy, I'm about to get my doctorate degree in, in May, hopefully, if I pass this last course, um, once I'm done that doctorate degree, uh, I'm going to study film. And uh, film, it's like you either have the choice to go in America, where schools are insanely expensive. Uh, and I already went to school four years in America, and I'm not about to do another couple of years of school in America. So uh, the school I'm going to is pretty affordable. It's in Toronto. That's the downfall. But Toronto is a huge film city right now. Like Netflix just expanded a lot of operations to Toronto, and I'm hoping to... Uh, get a job in film because uh, I, I have my pharmacy degree as like a plan B is in my back pocket but my true heart's in film I want to study film and uh, that's basically the reason why I started a YouTube channel was because I'm like I'm stuck doing this pharmacy degree for a while I still want to like exercise my film muscles so why not start a YouTube channel where I just talk about film I love John Leguizamo. <laughs> oh no, I'm reading Lauren's comment. <laughs> Lauren's unleashed tonight. I'm not bi, but Kristen Stewart can get... Uh, uh, I'm not bi, but Kristen Stewart could get it. She looks sad, but she looks like she could eat... Meow! Very well. All she needs is a new hairstylist. Um... Ah. Uh, I don't know what to say to that. Uh... I'm not going to say if I agree, but I'm not going to say that I disagree either. Uh, that's awesome, Ash Ventura says. Thank you. Uh, Lauren Hill says, lol, me, I got this stupid liberal arts degree, but I'm trying to be a screenwriter. You and me both, Lauren, that's what I want to do as well. I want to screenwrite. Uh, yo, if you want... Send over scripts, I'll send you over scripts, we can get a screenwriting club together. Who knows, maybe like we can correct each other's scripts. I'd be down to do a little screenwriting club with you. I'm currently reading, like, right now I have a bit of a break from pharmacy school. Um, I have like a few weeks off. I'm towards the end of that break, but I've been reading a lot about how to write scripts. Like, kind of like textbook kind of things. So, uh, DM me, Lauren. I'd like to share some scripts with you and like go back and forth and maybe do a little screenwriting club. Uh, 
Pure Hangout. This song wasn't even nominated. Another shameless plug. Thank you. And was Megan the Stallion in Encanto? Can someone fill me in on that? I didn't see Encanto. Was Megan the Stallion in it? Okay, I, I think in this part they just added it in. Megan the Stallion isn't supposed to be in the song. She was talking about the Academy Awards. Guys, I'm going to go take a piss again and get another drink and I'll be right back, okay? Stay tuned. Okay, I'm back. Lauren says, you're I'm a novice when it comes to scripts and I'm dabbling in UX UI design. Uh, what's UX? Is it user interface? Uh, UX. Interface designer. Okay, that's what I thought. Uh, I don't know what the difference between UX and UI is, but uh, I have nonsensical dreams every six months because my brain is uh, electric, but I'd honestly love to do something in film. Um, yeah, and it's like, I'm in the kind of the same boat. I'd love to do something in film. Um, I'm planning on maybe filming something like a short film maybe in June, while I'm still in Maine. Uh, hopefully that ends up working. It's kind of been difficult so far. Uh, but yeah, all I can say is, Lauren, I've been like helping out on film sets a lot. If you go in like on Facebook and you search up film sets, and there's usually like a community in Facebook. They'll call it like Maine Community Filmmakers, or they'll call it, in your case, New York Community Filmmakers. And just go on film sets and volunteer and see if you like it. Uh, Lauren, have you ever tried working as a production assistant? Uh, Lauren also says, did anyone see the new Scream? Uh, people said it was good. Um, I didn't see the new Scream. My brother said it was bad. My brother went to the theater to see it and he said it was a lot of fourth wall breaking. Which that's always what Scream has been. But he said it was like to the point where it was getting annoying. Uh, so yeah. Uh, Fuzz Aldrin said, I thought you were studying pharmacy. Yes, I was. I'm almost done my pharmacy degree. And uh, that's kind of like my my uh, 
degree I have in my back pocket, my backup plan. But yeah, I study pharmacy right now, and I'm graduating in May um, after six years. Whoo! That was a long degree to do! But uh, right now I'm 24. I still got some steam in me, and I want to study film. That's where, that's where the, that's where the true heart lays. Somehow I'm I've, like I was expecting to be more in tune with the Academy Awards, but this year is a lot more boring than I was hoping it would be. Uh, so, yeah, I I enjoy just looking at the chat more than looking at the Academy Awards. <laughs> they have BTS. That's for the that's for the Zoomers. Zoomers like K-pop. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I'm just setting some stuff up here, guys. Yeah, so Fuzz Aldrin, I was starting studying pharmacy. I'm almost done. I'm done in May, and then I want to study something else. I want to study film. Uh, hopefully, I can produce something that's a little better than the Oscars. <laughs> Why are they doing so many King Richard plugs? Wow, Amy Schumer showing up as Spider-Man. Those are some really strong cables. Fuzz Aldrin says cringy skit. Yeah, that was pretty cringy, the Spider-Man one. Um, Lauren says user interaction. Digital ableism plagues our devices. I want to create an equitable experiences for all, no matter their ability status. That's awesome. Um, yeah, my mom actually, uh, she had uh, Lou Gehrig's disease. So something like that would have been really helpful for her. So I hope it works out for you, man. Um, Lauren, no, but I definitely want to try. Uh, I'm from the Yeehaw state of Austin, and Austin, Texas has been popping South by Southwest Festival, and it's glorious. Big indie film supporter. That's awesome. I, I actually have a friend who's from New York, actually. She flew to Austin, Texas just to volunteer at South by Southwest, and uh, I hear it was a pretty good show this year. Elliot Page, she is taking something to make her look more manly. Uh, I'm not going to comment on that, but... I mean, yeah, she's Elliot all of a sudden. <laughs> I mean, she is taking something to make herself more manly, hence the name Elliot. Uh, yeah. You know what's the weird thing, too? I used to have such a crush on Ellen Page... And uh, then, like, when she said she was a lesbian, I was like, oh, shoot, she's a lesbian. Now I'm never going to get her. As if I had a chance with Ellen Page in the first place. And uh, then it just became, like, doubled down because she became Elliot Page. And I'm like, well, now there's no going back, you know? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's my story of me and Elliot Page. Um, yeah. Yeah. 
Was it Kenneth Branagh win Best Director? Or Best Screenplay? Best Screenplay was the award. Uh, sorry, I wasn't really paying attention. Uh, I told you it was propaganda for black males. Yeah, you did. Uh, what's frog coffee? Frog coffee emoji? What's the frog emoji and the coffee emoji, Lauren? Uh, I suck at Zoomer speak. Yeah. So let's go through our bingo. Uh, Celeb in the... I haven't really been paying attention because it's been so boring. But uh, come to think of it, gender norm bending outfit. At the red carpet, there is one. They had like this random sketch where they were like having people read lines and they're, like, read this line, but be sad. Read this line, but be happy. And they went to a black guy and they're like, read this line, but say it's sassy because, you know, he's black. Say it's sassy. Uh, borderline offensive, but... He was dressed as, like, a woman, but I'm not going to count it. What is this girl talking about adapted screenplay? She's talking about walnuts? This is what I mean by awkward comedic presenter. Awkward comedic presenter? Just that r weird rambling? Oh, I didn't know Coda was based on La Famille Bellier. Uh, my French teacher back in high school used to always tell me, please watch La Famille Bellier. And I never watched it for some reason. Mostly because people, they know I'm into movies and they'll always throw film recommendations at me. So I never got around to watching La Famille Bellier. But uh, I'm a bit more interested now because it's probably better than Coda. Oh, okay, it's the Kermit gif. <laughs> That's what the coffee and the frog means. Thank you, Lauren. Uh, Lowell, I've never finished Juno. Um, you're not missing out on much. I really didn't like Juno. I thought it was one of those overrated movies. Uh, I hated how Ellen Page's character, she's like talking about 80s culture. And when that happens, I don't hear a teenage girl. I hear the screenwriter who's like probably really into 80s culture and talking about the Smiths or whatever's from the 80s. So I wasn't that big into Juno. But that director made another movie that's called Thank You for Smoking. Fantastic movie. And it's a movie about like uh, corruption, basically. It's about lobbying. It's about uh, advertising and stuff like that. It's about a guy. If you guys haven't seen the movie Thank You for Smoking, it's about a guy and uh, the guy's job is to lobby for a cigarette company and he'll go through anything for that. So it was really interesting. So I think Coda won for this one. But yeah, watch Thank You for Smoking is what I'm saying. Don't watch Juno. Yeah, Coda won.
Okay, the fan favorites. We've got the fan favorite movies going on now. What's that Johnny Depp movie in the fan favorite movie? The Amazon Cinderella movie! Okay, okay, definitely best popular movie is a movie no one cares about. It's gonna be Army of the Dead. It's gonna be Army of the Dead. It's. Okay, that's it. Best popular movie is a movie no one cares about. Here we go. I count it. I said in my prediction video that if a movie, if Army of the Dead wins best popular movie, it's a movie no one cares about in my opinion. So here we go. Best popular movie is a movie nobody cares about. There we go. We went on, uh, there was a little drought, there was a little drought going on there, but ooh, we were back. Especially that Minamata, what was that Minamata thing? I think maybe, like, the internet has, like, a rabid community of people backing up Johnny Depp. Uh, I haven't been following it, I can't defend him or oppose him, but yeah, it's just, nah, I don't know what that was. Uh, 80s brought nothing but good horror flicks. That's facts, Lauren. Look, the 80s sucks for movies, but the horror films in the 80s, absolute slappers. Um, just the feel of them and stuff. I do like horror movies in the 70s, too. 90s was a drought for horror. 90s horror movies sucked. The only 90s horror movie that was, like, remotely popular was Cube. It was like that weird kind of... <laughs> You know, like, Resident Evil, how they play, like, basically house music throughout the movie? And it has, like, that uh, really ugly, saturated blue look. Like, they're all trying to rip off the Matrix. Um, 80s horror movies slap. 90s horror movies don't slap. Uh, then 2000s, you got Saw and Final Destination and all the horror, like, gore porn uh, movies. But, uh, yeah. I really liked horror in the 80s and 70s. That was, like, peak horror. And you know what? Horror nowadays is really good when you compare it to the 90s and even the 2000s. Like, Hereditary, one of my favorite all-time horror movies. Such an amazing movie. Uh, if you want to talk about Ari Aster's other movie, Midsommar, fantastic as well. The Lighthouse. The Lighthouse is amazing. So many good horror movies coming out. There was, like, some hipster dude in my pharmacy class. He was talking about, like... Ah, um, horror movies these days are so bad. And I'm like, says who? You? No, they're slapping right now. They're slapping right now. Uh, yeah. 90s was the romantic renaissance. Yeah, that that's facts. Like, you got shit like You Got Mail and stuff like that. That was, that was pretty good. Uh, nine, and uh, 2000s was stoner buddy films. Oh my god, Lauren, you're spitting so many facts right now. The stoner phase of the 2000s was so good. I love that phase. Like, I wish it made a comeback. Movies like, dude, I love Dude, Where's My Car? That's such a, such a, Harold and Kumar, great movie. I love the Christmas Harold and Kumar movie the most. That was my favorite of the bunch. So many good movies that came out that were like stoner comedies. Uh, what else? Uh, Friday, that was more 90s, I think, but Friday is awesome. Uh, what was the name of the movie Red Man did? Uh, what was it? Uh, it was with, uh, it was with Red Man. How High, there we go. How High, uh, there was the Dave Chappelle one. They all have similar sounding names, uh. Half Baked was the Dave Chappelle one. You're right, it was the stoner comedy phase. That was a good one. Uh, Lauren, you're saying, whoa, he's bilingual. Bilingualism is sexy. It is a sexy characteristic in a person. And I'm not just saying that because I'm <laughs> bilingual. Patting myself on the back here. <laughs> uh, but who are you talking about that's bilingual? Uh, 
Minamata is about chemicals making mutant kids in Japan. Uh, Fuzz Aldrin, did you watch that movie? Because uh, it didn't get much publicity because it has Johnny Depp in it and he's kind of uh, exed from Hollywood. Uh, Minamata. Ah, it's actually got some pretty good reviews. Uh, damn, this is interesting. I've never heard of this movie. It stars Johnny Depp and Bill Nye. Uh, that's actually interesting. Don't look up for best score. <laughs> uh, I love Johnny Greenwood. Dune deserved to win, but I, I would have, I would have been okay if uh, Johnny Greenwood won for Power of the Dog, even though I didn't like Power of the Dog. Um, next, we got uh, Lauren says Black Christmas, nineteen seventy four, was the first slasher uh, Canadian film. By the way, I've seen Black Christmas; it's a great movie. But it got overshadowed by Halloween, which came out in 78. That's right. Uh, I love the first Black Christmas. Um, I wouldn't say it's the first slasher movie, though. Uh, if you want to count Psycho as a slasher movie, that came way before Black Christmas. Uh, but yeah, Black Christmas is a fun time, and it is a Canadian classic. They remade it recently. My dad watched it because he saw the original one in theaters. And he said it was awful, so I didn't give it a shot. It was a lot of, like, modern politics woven into the film, so. Fuzz Aldrin saw Minamata. It was very good. Oh, damn, I'm, I'm going to watch it. I'm going to add that to uh, my list of uh, uh, Fuzz Aldrich films here. Uh, so I'm gonna, I just added Minamata to the list. Billie Eilish. I actually like the Billie Eilish Bond song. Uh, way better than the one we got in the last movie. The, how can I breathe? How can I live? How can I feel? I'm so okay. That was such an awful song. Lauren, Chucky. Um, Chucky came out after Halloween, if I remember correctly. Um, let me look that up just to be sure. Chucky. Well, the first one was called Child's Play. The first one came out in 88. Wow, I, can't, I thought it came out way before that. But yeah, I was pretty sure it came out after Halloween. Uh, yeah. Lauren, you were speaking French earlier. Baguette. <laughs> you know, I speak French, but it's Quebecois. It doesn't really sound like nice French. It sounds a little... Uh, it kind of sounds like what Scottish sounds to English. It's just like a very butchered. But I think Quebec French is way better than French French. I think it's way funner to speak it. There's such a weird melody to it as well. Um, I don't speak it all that well. Ash Ventura, who's been popping into this chat, probably speaks way better than me. Uh, I, I grew up going to a French uh, elementary school and high school, so... I learned to speak the language, and where I live is mostly French, so I have to like, get by. But yeah, I speak uh, English and I speak French. I speak a little bit of Arabic, because my mom is from Syria. So just a little tad of Arabic. I wish I spoke more of it, but that's all I know. Uh, Lauren says, wasn't Johnny Depp cancelled? I didn't know he had a movie. Yeah, no, that's why I was surprised too. I didn't know he had a movie as well. I think what happened is that it was like a vote thing, that thing uh, we saw, the Johnny Depp thing. Basically, the Oscars are trying to be more hip, so they had fans vote for movies. And I actually did it, and I voted for Midnight in the Switch Glass, which is a movie starring Megan Fox, Bruce Willis, and Machine Gun Kelly. Obviously a troll pick. 
Um, it would have been funny if that movie won, but I just wanted to troll. But yeah, that's that's why you had uh, uh, that Johnny Depp movie. I think like Johnny Depp, he has so much internet supporters because of his uh, uh, conflict with Amber Heard. Uh, that he like, I think it was those people who ultimately came to the rescue and gave him the best popular movie. And a lot of people are gonna look up what's Minamata. So, and from what uh, Fuzz Aldrin is saying, it's a decent movie. So, uh, at least the Oscars are <laughs> giving recognition to some movies that are a little more underground, I guess. Even those mostly the fans that did it. Uh, Billy Eilish in a parachute. <laughs> that does look like a parachute. Um. I don't know what I feel about Billie Eilish. Sometimes I like her, sometimes I don't like her. I'm a little on the fence about her. Um, Lauren says, Peeping Tom came out in 1960, too. You could say that that was the first slasher. It was a British film. So oh, yeah, Peeping Tom is a classic. Uh, yeah, Peeping Tom... What came first, Peeping Tom or Psycho? So it came out in 1960, Peeping Tom, and Psycho was later than that. Oh no, it was 1960 as well. It came out the same year. Jeez. Uh, Lauren, no, you mentioned Red Man in a 2000 stoner movie earlier. He was in Seed of Chucky, that's why I mentioned it. Oh, okay, I see. Now I get it, okay. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, sorry, I'm a bit on a delay here. So, yeah, he was in Seed of Chucky. Uh, I think I watched Seed of Chucky, but I don't remember Redman being in it. Uh, let me just look up Seed of Chucky. John Water. okay, yeah, I remember he is in it, Redman, and John Waters is in it as well. I remember seeing uh, Seed of Chucky because I'm a huge John Waters fan. And I was like, anything with John Waters, I'm going to watch, even if it's shit. So, uh, yeah. I'm a... One thing about... If I had to do, like, a Mount Rushmore of directors, I'd have... John Waters would be on that Mount Rushmore. Scorsese, safe to say. Uh, who else? Probably Sam Raimi. Tarantino. Those would be, like, my Mount Rushmore. Of directors. Um, I love Lloyd Kaufman. He makes the trauma movies. He made Toxic Avenger. Um, who, who are other directors I like? Lauren, do you have any favorite directors? What about you, Fuzz Aldrin? Who are your favorite directors? I have a lot of John Waters reviews on my channel as well. Uh, Alan Yin just texts, Hey Paul, uh, I think Alan is from high school. In that case, if it's, if it's that Alan, What's up dude, I hope you're doing all well. Thanks for tuning in. Um, if it's a different Alan, my apologies. But I'm pretty sure it's that Alan. Alan, are you watching the Academy Awards or, or the Oscars?
All right. Lauren says Brian De Palma would be on mine. Brian De Palma, I, I never grew up with his movies that much, and I've kind of been getting into him more later in life. I recently watched a Brian De Palma movie. I forget which one, but I ended up enjoying it a lot. Let me just look up what Brian De Palma movies I watched recently because I kind of went down a Brian De Palma rabbit hole. I watched, uh, I watched, I watched Carlito's Way. I watched Carlito's Way for the first time, and that was a fantastic movie. Uh, I can't believe I've been missing out on it so much, you know? Uh, that was a really good movie, and obviously I think Curious is best movie, and uh, it's kind of like sad to say because it was so early on in his career, but I think Carrie is fantastic, one of the greatest horror movies of all time. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Alan confirms, yes, it's the Alan that I think, and he's watching the Oscars with Jackie. Um, for those in the live stream who don't know, Jackie helps me edit the videos, um, when I end up editing something, it kind of looks like this. It kind of looks like my bingo interface with the Academy Awards. It kind of doesn't look good. But Jackie is a, a bit more uh, better technically than me, to say the least. He's a lot better technically than me. I'm a bit of an old dinosaur, so Jackie's always got my back. But thanks for tuning in, Alan and Jackie. Uh, Lauren, John Waters is an honorable mention. Desperate Living is my fave. Desperate Living is a dank movie, but I think my favorite one is Polyester. Lauren, if you've never watched Polyester with the Scratch and Sniff, please do it. It's such an awesome experience. Um, yeah, I remember watching uh, Polyester with a girl I had a crush on, and that was kind of a, a thing we did. We watched Polyester with the Scratch and Sniff. It was a dank time. Dank time. Dank time. All right. <laughs> Uh, Alan Yin. Nice hair, dude. I just got a haircut, and my friends were saying that I got a haircut. Uh, yeah. My friends are, I'm just, I'm looking at my haircut here. My friends are saying I got a haircut just for the Academy Awards. No, I didn't. I got a haircut because no one in Maine can cut hair, so I made sure to get a haircut while I'm here. I'm looking at the Oscars, they're talking about NFTs. Cringe. Cringe. Fuzz Aldrin. Brian De Palma. Carrie equals chilling. Very chilling. Very fucked up movie. Very dank movie. Viggo Mortensen scene in Carlito's Way is my fave. That was a great moment in the movie. Uh, that I didn't even recognize Viggo Mortensen. I, I saw his name obviously show up in the opening credits, but I was like, damn. He's barely recognizable in this. Alan Yin, you need to pay Jackie. Alan, I tried to convince this guy. Please, take some money. He's too nice, but yeah. I'm thinking like, I don't know. I I want to, but... Because Jackie's always been by my side. He's like, he's such a cool guy for that, but he just doesn't want you. Like, I, I agree, but... Uh, and uh, yeah, wherever I go, Jackie's coming with me. We're bros. Uh, yeah. And, like, this summer, hopefully, like, I get this short film done. And uh, Jackie, hopefully, is there to edit with me. And we'll have a really good time together. I'll be in Toronto at the time of editing. And we'll do it together. It'll be a fun time. Um, I think Jackie just really likes editing, to be honest. So, um, But, yeah, I offered. But Michael Powell has bops, too. Who's Michael Powell? Name's not Michael Powell. Yeah, Peeping Tom. I haven't seen anything besides Peeping Tom from him. I'd have to check more of his movies out. Thanks for putting that on my radar. Uh, Sisters is my favorite Brian De Palma film. I know it should be Scarface, but it's okay. You know what? I'm not that big into Scarface. Uh, I mean, I think it's a great movie, don't get me wrong, but, uh, I think Carrie is better than Scarface, even though people think Scarface is his best movie. Oh. Huh.
What the fuck was that? What was that? Did you guys see that? What is going on? Can someone explain what happened? What the fuck was that? Please, someone in the chat, help me out on that. What the fuck did I just witness? I didn't hear what Chris Rock said prior. What the fuck was that? <laughs> I'm just, like, confused. Can someone in the chat please fill me in? What what was the Chris Rock joke? I'm just <laughs> speechless right now. Jeez, Fuzz Aldrin, Aldrin, yeah, Chris Rock made fun of Jada, and Will Smith slapped Chris Rock, but what was the joke? What was the joke? I'm gonna count that as another Oscar flub, fuck it. It's not a traditional flub, but I mean, <laughs> it was a flub. Another Oscar flub. <laughs> Poor Chris Rock. Summer of Love was a great movie, by the way, for those of you who didn't watch it. Dude, I have so much secondhand embarrassment for Chris Rock right now. Poor guy. Oh. <laughs> Chris Rock can't wait to get the fuck off stage. Yeah, exactly. Lauren checks Twitter. Exactly. Fuzz Aldrin. Chris Rock said, I can't wait for Jada to star in G.I. Jane 2. But what was wrong with that joke? I don't get it. What was that? I Lauren, tell me what's going on on Twitter. I can't do it with my computer, but you tell me what's going on on Twitter. Holy mackerel! I can't believe it! I'm still like... <laughs> oh, Jada is bald. That was the joke? I didn't even see that Jada was bald. Holy mackerel. Lauren, put the link put the link in the chat or in the comments if you can. Jeez. Like I'm happy for summer Oh my god. I'm happy for summer of love, but Will Smith just t took everything out of the room. <laughs> Sucked it out. <laughs> oh 
<laughs> Poor P. Diddy has to follow that. <laughs> He's walking on eggshells. <laughs> Holy mackerel. I'm actually stressed for Chris Rock right now. Whew. P. Diddy, let it go. And why is Will Smith laughing as if nothing happened? Okay, you know what? That was such a what the fuck moment. It could technically be a celeb in the audience being a clown moment. It was a pretty clown move from Will Smith. I don't know if he was in on the joke though. Was that staged? Because now he's laughing at it as if nothing happened. Am I the only one who loves that? It's toxic masculinity at its finest, but I want a man to clean someone's clock for me. Here's the thing, Lauren. I don't disagree with you. If you want to go, like, after the show, go to Chris Rock and kick the shit out of him, go for it. I, I get it. Go for it. But it's you really take away from the Questlove documentary. It's kind of like when Kanye uh, went on stage and did the Beyonce should have won. I mean, if you want to do that to... Uh, Taylor Swift, do it after the show. Because right now... Oh, okay, so Lauren is saying Jada has a condition and she had to shave her head. Ah, I see. Um, I didn't even think it's that bad a joke, you know? Like, you <laughs> shave your head. It was mad disrespectful. Um, yeah. I mean, it's not the thing... It's not a thing you do at the Academy Awards, too. It is something you do more at the Golden Globes, but I didn't think it was... I mean, she's bald, and you know what? Jada's actually rocking the bald head. I didn't know she had a condition. Um, Jeez. I thought it was just like a... Whew. Wow-wee. Um, yeah. Yeah, I have no problem with him giving him shit, but in the middle of the award, when you do that, it's like you're putting the attention on you more. It's not a, I don't think it's him coming to his wife's defense as much as, as it is just like uh, kind of putting on a show. It could have been done way better is what I'm saying. Just handle it like a man. We'll do it after the show. Um, Yeah, I'm just whole. I think I need a night to think on that one. I, I can't talk about it right now. I'm just flustered. Uh, I, I probably need a day. You need to do research. Man crisis, the single mother culture breeds violence and uh, overreactions. Um, is that a... So I think what Fuzz Aldrin is suggesting, and correct me if I'm wrong, Fuzz Aldrin, on this. You're saying that... Uh, People who are raised in a uh, single mother household are, tend to be more violent and have more overreactions. Um, so if that's what you're going with, yeah, like, but still, it's like, I, I can't, I don't even know Will Smith's story. Yeah, I can't really judge, I'm not going to step my toe into what you're saying, Fuzz Aldrin. Uh, Al Pacino looks like he's completely lost here. Um... Lauren says, it was ghetto, but I love mild chaos that doesn't involve me. That's the luxury of being a girl. You don't have to be the one involved in the chaos. You just got to wait for your man to do it. Uh, yeah, it's like, I got to be the one picking the fight here. I got to be, you know, jeez, Lauren. A real shit stir you are, Lauren. <laughs> Fuzz isn't wrong. They're quick to react. 
Will Smith is set for life and a Hollywood darling. He'll face no ramifications. And I'm sure not. And you know what? It's like, I don't think he should face ramifications for that. Um, it just happened. It is what it is. Like, you know, like, it is a sensitive topic, too. Um, like, there are cases in my personal life, looking back at it, where, uh, I don't know, what does Jada Pinkett have? Um, let me just look up her condition. Uh, she has alopecia. So, she has alopecia, which is, uh, basically just hair loss, um... But it, it just says alopecia. It doesn't say any underlying cause. Um, but anyway, personally, I was in a situation where uh, growing up, um, my mom was sick. And I did get kind of violent at times. I'd kind of like... Um, so it, it is a sore topic, you know. Like sometimes you react a certain way and you don't really mean it. It's just in the heat of the moment. So, uh, yeah, I don't really blame him for thinking that and... It is what it is. I'm black and people be calling me whitewashed. I don't know how <laughs> we went from the Academy Awards just to talking about a bunch of social issues. But that's basically the Academy Awards, I guess. I'm black and people be calling me whitewashed because I eat salad. Sorry, I had my mom and my dad in my life. Rolls eyes. Um, yeah, that is... <laughs> I'm looking at the other comments. Sorry, one comment at a time. So yeah, about that black comment, um, I have a good friend who used to complain about that to me. I mean, not complain. It's out of good reason. I mean, I don't want to sound dismissive here, but uh, she was very like academically driven, and uh, growing up, she'd actually get bullied a lot for it from her peers just because it was like weird. It's like, why are you doing this, uh, this white thing, which like. Yeah, it's, it's an unfortunate situation, and, you know, there is, like, a bad history, so I don't know what to say about it. I'm really not a political guy, unfortunately, uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, like, Lauren, it does suck, but just keep doing you, girl. Just keep doing you, and fuck the haters. Fuck the haters. Um... Should you check off abortion rights when someone got slapped so hard that his kids' kids would have felt it? <laughs> I peeked at that comment earlier on and I was trying to... Oh, that, that is a classic. They better do a tribute to Norm Macdonald here. Please. Norm Macdonald was an OG. Please. Oh, Helena Hutchins. That's the person uh, Alec Baldwin shot. That was unfortunate. Peter Bogdanovich. I liked him a lot. Speaking of good directors, you ever watch Paper Moon? That's a slapper of a movie. That movie slaps. Certified dank, in my opinion. Lauren, please throw the the Will Smith slap clip in the in the chat if you can find it. I might have missed it. I don't think I did. Ah, oh, yes, the good Ivan Reitman tribute. I 
Ivan Reitman to classic movies there. Sony Shiba died? I didn't even know that. I actually didn't even know he was alive, but... I didn't see Norm Macdonald. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for Norm Macdonald. Melvin Van Peebles died. I didn't even know that one either. Sweet Sweetback died. Uh, he was really old though. He was like uh, almost, he was probably almost a hundred now, if I remember correctly. I don't see Norm Macdonald, folks. Okay, sorry, I gotta catch up with the chat here. Should you, uh, we saw that one. Lowell California is offering half-price child deletions. They're tired of the chicanery, too. <laughs> okay, I don't know anything about politics. You guys don't understand. Um, I don't know what's going on with abortion in America. I'm like a mutt. I'm in Canada half the time, America half the time. Um, they're suing Alex family, I heard. I heard that too. And, uh, yeah, I kind of have an Alec Baldwin parody video on my channel, if you guys didn't see that. Uh, the, Lauren, you tried sending the slap, but unfortunately, YouTube removed it, so I don't think it works. Because it has, like, footage from the Academy Awards. They're considering it piracy. Um, Fuzz Aldrin end with Betty White. Nope. <laughs> Obviously not. We're still going. Jean-Marc Vallée. Good Quebecois boy. I'm looking at the clip right now of, uh, of uh, Will Smith slapping Chris Rock. That was a fucking huge slap. He ain't swung that hard since he played Ali. Yeah, no Norm McDonald. They obviously didn't watch Dirty Work, which is a classic. Not to self, learn to fight. <laughs> I get it, they can't tribute everyone, but... Or maybe they did Norm Macdonald the last Oscars? No, he passed away in September. Oh, okay, they have, like, other legends we've lost on the website, so... Uh, Lauren, Paper Moon looks glorious. I want to watch it 100. Lauren, Paper Moon is one of my all-time favorite movies. It's about... Uh, a guy who lives, he's a con artist, and he lives in the Great Depression, and uh, he's selling Bibles, and he has a really, like, shady way of selling these Bibles. Great movie by Peter Bogdanovich. I love that movie. It's It feels like a warm blanket whenever I watch that movie. It's just such a cozy watch. Uh, Lauren, me, if they bring up Sidney Poitier uh, and a Grasshopper. I don't know what that means, but I do love me some Sidney Poitier. You're going to jump on him? Is that what it means, the grasshopper? You're ready to jump on him?
Uh, Fuzz Aldrin, do you think Chris Rock will get canceled over the Oscars? No. Um, Chris Rock is way too respect. He's one of those people who are grandfathered in. Um, he was grandfathered in, like kind of like Jerry Seinfeld. He's at that point where he can say anything and he won't get canceled. He's you can't cancel him at this point unless he does something like Louis C.K. did, just jerking off in front of people. But uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, I don't think they're going to cancel him. I think the whole thing is more of a mis misunderstanding, if anything. So, it is what it is. Um, I don't think they cancel. They, he's probably never going up to another Oscars, because his Oscars, like, a lot of people didn't like what he did back when he hosted it. And uh, now he got slapped in the face. I don't think he wants to do the Oscars anymore. Why would he do the Oscars after that? Just get fucking slapped in the face by Will Smith? Please. Chris Rock is, he can do anything he wants at this point. He can do a Netflix special, pays for his rent for the whole, or pays for his mortgage or whatever he's got. Uh, he's a rich dude, he probably owns his own place. But yeah, it's just, you do a stand-up special on Netflix, you get paid enough. It's like, I love Chris Rock too. You ever watch the movie Top 5 with Chris Rock? That's a movie that slaps as well. And you know what? I don't like Leslie Jones. She annoys me a lot of the time, but Leslie Jones in that movie... She slaps as well. She does a phenomenal job in that movie. J.B. Smoove in that movie, awesome job as well. I love J.B. Smoove, one of my, f my favorite comedic actors right now. I love Curb Your Enthusiasm. Yo, Larry David! Hey, Larry David! That's my, <laughs> that's my awful J.B. Smoove impression. Um, he won't get canceled over it. No, I don't think so. He probably won't do an Oscars again, and it'll be mutual. The Oscars doesn't want Chris Rock. Chris Rock doesn't want the Oscars, so... I just read the article on the black girl, PJ. They called her plump. Yo, old school articles were funny. <laughs> Who's PJ? Uh, is PJ the girl in the movie? I forget her name in the movie, Paper Moon. No, who's PJ? The, I read the article on the black girl PJ. I don't know who PJ is. They called her plump. Yo, old school articles were funny. Yeah, and that's why I kind of like... Dude, do you remember Joan Rivers? Do you guys remember Joan Rivers? Half the shit she would say would not fly these days. She would just... Like, every time there was an Oscars... She would, like, go with, like on the red carpet and be like, what is she wearing? Oh, why is she wearing a beige dress? That's hideous. <laughs> I mean, you got to miss Joan Rivers, man. She was such, like, she was the inter, she was the original internet troll. She really was. Paper Moon article. How an overweight 15-year-old found happiness on a movie sit set. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> I can't believe that's a thing. Uh, not a grasshopper, it's a cricket equals silence. Uh, Lauren, are you not a fan of Sidney Poitier? Explain it. Production design now. Uh, Tragedy of Macbeth had some pretty dank uh, production design. West Side Story as well. Could be a crapshoot, could be anyone. Uh, probably Dune, just because it's so big. Oh, this one...
I personally cancel people by simply not buying slash watching or streaming their content. Sure, they get ran off the internet for a few months, but they return like nothing happened. Uh, I'm I'm with you, Lauren. Uh, I don't, uh, you know, and like, dude, if you're gonna like stop consuming art just because the artist is like a shit person, I hate to break it to you, 90% of the people in Hollywood are shit people. Like, it is what it is, you know? Like, what, are you gonna stop watching stuff just because you don't like who made it, you know? Like, um, I mean... Roman Polanski, one of the greatest filmmakers of all time. Chinatown is an all-time classic. Uh, I was talking about earlier how I was reading screenwriting textbooks. They always refer to Chinatown because Chinatown is a masterpiece. It's the gold standard of film. So, but I, it's, the guy is a fucking weirdo. He's a creep. He's a criminal. So, he's disgusting. What can you do? It doesn't mean I don't like Chinatown. It's still a good movie. Films are a collaborative process. There's tons of people who work on a movie. Um, are you going to cancel a movie or hate a movie just because one person is bad? It's a iffy territory. And look at, go in an art museum, look at like old Roman art. Look at Michelangelo. I doubt Michelangelo was a great person, you know, so. I'm just speculating. Michelangelo was maybe a great person, but yeah. Um, Lauren also says they all have their stands, their money, their clout. Kevin Hart said some homophobic things, uh, cheated on both his wives, left his friends alone in a burning car to die after an accident, and is an alcoholic. Um, about the burning car thing, I think he was just the only one who survived because I know he was unable to walk for a while. So maybe he was just unable to save his friends, quite frankly. Um, I'm not, <laughs> it's one of those things. Lauren, it's easy for you to comment because uh, your uh, your face is not talking on the internet. But I have to keep it quite civil. But uh, the homophobic things, I didn't think they were that homophobic. They were jokes that didn't work. Um, and they were from years ago. So I don't, I'm not even a Kevin Hart fan. I, I don't really like his stuff. I don't think he's funny. My friend actually went to see a Kevin Hart show in Montreal. And she said it was waste of money she didn't really like it at all it was a lot of screaming um yeah it's just like it is what it is uh cheated on both his wives yeah that's kind of shit too i can't defend my boy on that one that's some shit stuff um it is what it is uh i love roman in the tenant there's a fine line. I have problematic faves. Chuck and Larry is a, is a cinematic gold, but... What's Roman in the Tenant, though? Oh, okay, The Tenant, I see what you're saying, Roman Polanski's Tenant, no, okay, no, yeah, that's a great movie, I finally clicked in, my bad, uh, there's a fine line, I have problematic faves like Chuck, guy, Chuck and Larry is awesome, I was just thinking of that too, like, whenever people ask me for my favorite Adam Sandler comedies, Chuck and Larry is always one of my go-to ones, it's just so funny, and you know what, it's like, you can say that it's, like, kind of homophobic that they're, like, sleeping in the be same bed and they're like, ew, gross, we're in the same bed. But if you put me in the same bed as, like, my best friend who's also a dude and we're both straight dudes and we're in the same... That's exactly how we would be. We would be like, ugh, sleeping in the same bed? Gross. You know? Like, it, it, it is, on the surface level, homophobic, but it's about, like, bro culture at the same time underneath it. Um, I really like Chuck and Larry. Um, <laughs> I love the part Steve Buscemi is digging through the trash. He's like, your trash isn't gay enough. <laughs> it's like, what well, is this fucking guy? Uh, no, I'm speaking on his canceling. He wasn't canceled for all the things he did. But no, I get what you mean, Lauren. It's like, 
you're trying to make it even. Technically, what Kevin Hart did was way worse than what Louis C.K. did, like, from the looks of it. Uh, yeah, it's like, and that's why I don't think you should cancel, just supply and demand, let it do what it does. Um, yeah, because, uh, I mean, what Louis C.K. did was disgusting, but I don't think it was as bad as uh, what you're saying about uh, Kevin Hart, so. It's like, and Roseanne Barr, what she did wasn't even that bad. Um, uh, Carano, the girl who was in Mandalorian, wasn't that bad what she did. Uh, the girl who's playing uh, in Black Panther, she plays the girl in Black Panther. What's her name? Shiri in Black Panther? Um, she almost got cancelled over some really dumb stuff. James Gunn, same thing. So it's always like, and then meanwhile you have people that get away with it. So it's always like, either have like a good system in place where it's like, these are our quotas. If you do this, you're out. If you do this, you're that. But this kind of like, some people get away with it, some people don't. It's like, have a clear system. And to me, that clear system is the law. If, you, if you're not penalized by the law, you should be able to work. Oh, that's right. Lauren just reminded me. They have yellow face in the movie Chuck and Larry. Uh, <laughs> I forgot about... Rob Schneider plays an Asian... But you know what? My family is Arabic. And uh, when Rob Schneider played in uh, Zohan, he played like an Arab in Zohan. We would die of laughter. That was the fucking funniest shit. And at the same time, it's because like how much representation do Arabs get on screen? Like when Sasha Baron Cohen played the dictator, I went to see that in the theater with my mom. She was howling, laughing. Uh, there's a part where he's like pulling up torture. Oh, Jane Campion won. Jane Campion wins. We need a shot of Denzel not giving a fuck, then we'd get our bingo. But uh, what was I saying about Chuck and Larry? Yeah, like, I think it's funny sometimes, like, that kind of stuff. And, like, like as an Arab, it's like, there's not much Arab representation in film. So it's like, that's, like, our only representation. I'll take it. It's fucking hilarious, you know? Like, I don't take myself that seriously. Lauren, is she is he in the soup kitchen or living in a box or did he continue to get sponsors, endorsement, and movie roles? Uh, Rob Schneider, if you're talking about Rob Schneider, he kind of strikes me as the kind of person who he wants to be with his family. He wants to live off the grid. It's just he doesn't want to be caught up in this canceled fiasco. Like some of these people, like same with Adam Sandler. Uh. Yeah, it's like, you don't want your family to, like, go to school, like, your kids to go to school and, like, oh, my family says what you did is problematic, your daddy's a bad man. It's like, when you're a family man, you don't, you want to stay away from the spotlight in this day and age, I get it. A pure hangout, Will Smith being a clown. I was thinking about it, but I counted it as an other Oscar flub. Um, I think that was such a weird incident. Um, it deserves to be both. It can kind of check both boxes. I, I'm going to count it as both. It, it's an Oscar flub. The Oscars definitely didn't intend for that to happen. At the same time, it is a celeb in the audience kind of being a clown. I don't know if clown is the correct term for it, but ah, it's a, it's a little gray area. Uh... Lauren, 
I like problematic media. I'm not virtue signaling, but I can step away from films when I need to. Exactly. There's some films that I, like, the subject matter is, uh, like, offensive and I kind of, like, don't want to watch it. Uh, there's a there's this trend on the internet where people will watch movies just to get angry at it. They'll watch like the emoji movie and they'll be like, ah, that movie sucks. And then they'll do like a fifty minute video where it's a hundred and one reasons why the emoji movie sucks. Number one, the characters, and it's like, just don't watch it, dude. Like, who cares? You know, um, I don't watch stuff that's gonna offend me. And usually, what offends me is bad movies, and I don't like watching bad movies, so I usually tend to avoid them. That's why most of the time, like, my friends are always like, oh, go watch this movie. It's going to be popular if you do a video on it and your channel will blow up, which it probably won't, but it's like, I'm not interested. Uh, yeah. Uh, Lauren, lol, I was still talking about Kevin Hart, not Rob Schneider. Ah, I see. Is, what's he been up to? Well, Ash Ventura brought up earlier... Uh, yeah, Ash Ventura brought up earlier that um, he was uh, in a TV show recently on Netflix, and he, Ash Ventura said he liked it quite a bit. Um, it was called, uh, what was it called? I forget. Uh, yeah, so. Pure Hangout agrees with me. It's a tough call. Assault is assault to equal clown. I'll just check flub. <laughs> exactly. It's like a gray area. I'll just check both. Um, I want to bingo tonight. I want to party, so I'll check both. Dude, my bingo card is actually doing pretty well right now. Um, yeah. I'm actually quite impressed with my bingo card. But yeah, the whole, uh, going back on the, uh, on the, uh, yellow face from, uh, Rob Schneider, uh, if you guys saw this, uh, Lauren, especially, if you saw, um, what was that? Uh, there's a comedian I watch, he's an Indian guy, but he talks about the problem with Apu, and he doesn't like the fact that Apu got cancelled, and he explains why, and that's kind of what I feel like with, like, this kind of, like, cancellation culture where it's like oh you don't want to, you don't do this it's like but we like minorities do to a certain extent like making fun of themselves because they are seeing themselves on the screen and they are laughing because sometimes these stereotypes are true so it is what it is Oh, they're doing a Pulp Fiction tribute. John Travolta makes a scene. Please happen. Please happen.
I'm just looking to see if he causes a scene. Here's there's a lot of potential here. Potentially Denzel and potentially John Travolta. Okay, just catching up with the chat. Uh, if we, I think that was one of the first canceled films. Distributors wouldn't even touch that with the 10 foot pole. You know, it's one of the f earliest canceled films I can think of. Um, there was this movie where a comedian, I think it was Jerry Lewis, he tried making a movie about a clown in the Holocaust. Um, it was called The Day the Clown Cried or something like that. Um, you can't see it. It's impossible to find. It's not on the internet or anything. It didn't get distributors. Forgot what movie we're talking about that got canceled. Uh, they completely got rid of Apu. Uh, instead of hiring a brown actor, they just erased him. Uh, that's what I said earlier about complaint. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, that's exactly what I mean. It would be so awkward if Will Smith wins and he t he brings up the Chris Rock thing again. Okay. <laughs> Fuzz Aldrin is saying check off the John Travolta box. It was a borderline. He was dancing pretty weirdly. I think Denzel was so good in Tragedy of Macbeth. That's a cut to Jada being supportive right there. Will Smith wins, cut to Jada being supportive. There we go. We still have time for a relatable celebrity wardrobe malfunction. Uh-oh, Lauren's not liking the speech, I could tell. A defender for his family, but which family? <laughs> Hashtag arrest Will Smith is trending. <laughs> Uh, I hope John is doing well. I haven't heard much since Kelly died. Ah, yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, John Travolta, say what you will, classic actor. We're talking about Brian De Palma movies. Blowout, great movie. Great movie, certified dank in my opinion. Um, I think it's actually one of Tarantino. He said it's one of his favorite movies of all time. Um, yeah. Yeah. Just a great actor, John Travolta. I love John Travolta. Like, he's a meme on the internet, but it is what it is, you know? Um, <laughs> but yeah, the arrest Will Smith is trending. That's pretty good. <laughs> I mean, it is assault. Will, uh, Chris Rock, legally speaking, did nothing wrong. But uh, I don't think anyone's going to press charges. All right, Will Smith. Yeah, 
You have to take abuse. <laughs> Chris Rock took some abuse. <laughs> Denzel's such a bro. Adele Dezim. That was one of that was a classic moment. But put that aside, he flubbed his line there. No question about it. John Travolta flubbed his line. Good actor. What's a good John Travolta? Uh, get, uh, get get shorty. Why did they cut it, cut away? Chris is better than me. If I was him, I would have been laid out on the floor in the fetal position. I'm trying to get some of that Fresh Prince money. <laughs> you and me both, Lauren. You and me both. Um, taking a punch from Ali wouldn't have been fun. Uh, By the way, this live stream was really fun to do, and I'm happy at least someone showed up. Uh, we're, we had a good time here. I wasn't expecting anyone to show up, and I expected it to just do it on my own. Uh, but yeah, this was really fun to do. Thank you, everyone who showed up. Uh, Ash Ventura, Pure Hangout, Fuzz Aldrin, Space Between Our Houses, and... Uh, who else? Oh, Lauren, obviously. She's still here. Um, everyone else, I think, dipped, and rightfully so. This is a bit of a snoozer Oscar. Uh, Alan, thanks for showing up. Yeah. All right, uh, Lauren, he'll always be Danny Zuko in my book. My grease tape is fried, you hear me? One of my first sexual awakenings, along with, wow, along with Kenai from Brother Bear. Sad to admit. Yikes! What? Brother Bear? Lauren, are you uh, confessing you're a furry to me? No diss. Hey, we all got some weird stuff we're into, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, <laughs> Brother Bear, jeez. Are you talking about the bear? Or, it's been a while since I watched Brother Bear. Maybe they're like, you're talking about the humans before? Uh, or the bad guy? I can't remember. Uh, but yeah, Danny Zuko, Grease, Grease Lightning. I was always more of a Saturday Night Fever guy, though. 
Saturday Night Fever had, it was a bit more sexy. You had those camera shots that came from underneath and would like kind of zoom into his face and it was like that, you know? Um, yeah, Saturday Night Fever was a good time. Uh, Pulp Fiction, obviously, it's probably his best movie. Uh, a movie I really liked with him was the remake of Taking of Pelham 1, 2, 3. I thought that was good. Denzel and John Travolta going, uh, bunning heads. That was a sick movie. Um, it's not a movie people like, but I liked it. But I haven't seen it since it came out, and that was a while ago, so. Whew, yeah. Uh, I'm still wishing we get a bingo here. Um... <laughs> Lauren, yeah, she's a little too afraid to admit it. It's all good. It's 2021 or 2022. People like what they like. What's SNF was so good. SNF, what's SNF? Not good with abbreviations. Uh... Oh, Saturday Night Fever. Oh my god, I'm stupid. <laughs> Someone just came into the chat and so his name is Arrest Will Smith. <laughs> he says, hey. <laughs> Uh, Lauren, they're coming for us. <laughs> Welcome, Arrest Will Smith. I'm guessing you didn't subscribe to the channel. If you have, please subscribe. I would love to have you aboard because that's a pretty based name. Um... I don't know why my zoom is not working. I had to lick my finger. Sorry if that was gross. Arrest Will Smith says it's fuzz. It's fuzz. Exactly, Lauren, person of the night right here. Arrest Will Smith. Let's fucking go. I don't think we should arrest Will Smith, but, I mean, if Chris Rock wants to press charges, go for it. <laughs> he has every right to. How fucking funny would it be if Will Smith actually got arrested after tonight? That was such a weird event. You guys can probably look it back, look at, back at my live stream, and just be like, you can see my reaction to the event. I was just like, what the hell was that? I was confused. I kind of missed the fact that he joked about Jada, but... Lauren, he gone. He be walking side to side. Amy Schumer is so unfunny. Arrest Will Smith says, if I got hit on TV, I would flop and play dead. I think that's my go-to as well. 
I'd play dead. I'd guilt trip everyone. I'd play dead and make everyone feel like, oh my god, that Will Smith is such a monster. What did he do? That Will Smith is such a monster. That's a good move, arrest Will Smith. I agree. What is your profile pic, too? <laughs> is Will Smith the profile pic? Yeah, I think the lie dead is a pretty good move, but unfortunately, you have to present an award. Um, definitely, if Chris Rock is concussed, I think I uh, press charges. Yeah, Lauren brought that up, too. Lauren saying, lol, me. Uh, she brought that up earlier. She said she would uh, lie in the fetal position. Anthony Hopkins is a class act. Classic Anthony Hopkins movie, Elephant Man. You can't beat it. David Lynch at his finest. Elephant Man slaps. Um, ah. is this an actor drunkenly reads teleprompter board? I think it is. He's really bored. I'm going to count it, guys. Say what you will. Maybe he's old, but I think he's just really bored. I've seen Anthony Hopkins. Bored celebrity drunkenly reads teleprompter. He's not drunk, but he seems pretty bored. Lauren says, okay, I thought it was just me in reference to Amy Schumer. Okay, I thought it was just me. I don't want to be a hater because I want women to win. Because, duh, hashtag women empowerment. But homegirl Amy just don't got it. She don't got it. Yeah, exactly. And there was a time where I thought Amy Schumer was funny. Back when she, the Opie and Anthony show was a thing, I used to like Amy Schumer when she was on. Because I was like, wow, she's holding herself well with the guys. Uh... If you've never listened to the Opie and Anthony show, it was like this radio show where it was like shock, shock jocks. And she was able to talk to Opie and Anthony and sometimes like Bill Burr would be in the room or other comedians and she'd hold her own, you know? Like she would talk like one of the guys and then slowly it just, she stopped being funny. It is what it is. I just don't get the appeal. I think there are funny women out there. It's just not Amy Schumer. <laughs> Um, I think Wanda Sykes is actually the funniest of the three, especially tonight. That confirms it. But. Have you seen The Incident? It came out in 1967. I would want to see a remake. Uh... Was the incident? Um, no, I've never seen this movie. Martin Sheen. I'm gonna add it to my list. That list I was doing back when uh, the other guy was on. Uh, what was his name? Spencer was good. Lauren, there, uh, your friend uh, Kirsten, uh, Kristen Stewart, eh? Who? Oh, I wasn't expecting that. Jessica Chastain won for the eyes of Tammy Faye. Um, I haven't seen that one, but I hear it's good. I mean, I hear it's good. Critics kind of suck nowadays, but... Um, 
This is weird. My brother-in-law knows a guy who knows a guy who was involved with the real uh, Tammy Faye. And uh, he said the movie didn't go down like that. So... It's about two losers terrorizing innocent subway riders. I'm, I'm going to watch it, Lauren. That seems right up my alley. Thanks for bringing it to my attention. Um, if you look at... Um, if you look at the... Not this coming video. But eventually on the last week I watched, I'm going to talk about it. I'll give you my thoughts on it. Because, yeah. It really looks up my alley. What, what else has this guy made? Larry Pierce. Nothing I'm familiar with. One potato, two potato? The incident. Alright, I'm going to check that one out. Thanks for bringing it to my attention. The bigoted legislation, I thought people liked Biden. Uh, ah, Tammy, the OG player. She was what Olstein, Joel Olstein, wish she was. Yeah, exactly. I saw it on TMC channel one day, and I was perplexed. Uh, I never take public transit, but I did def. But if I did, it definitely wouldn't be at night. Oh, especially in New York, Lauren. I don't know how I'd feel about that, especially unfortunately being a woman. I'm lucky I'm a guy. If something happens to me, I feel like I could hold my own. But um, if, like, yeah, it's harder for girls to walk home alone at night and take public transportation. No offense to the women community. The whole community of women. 50% of all the women in the world. Or all the people in the world, rather, not women. Is that Liza Minnelli? I kind of wasn't paying attention. I think it is. Class act. Um, if you want to see how disgusting Hollywood is, look at what Hollywood did to Judy Garland, you know? It's like, and then here they are preaching to us, it's like... The Strangler was fun too. A movie of its time, but I think some of the themes are relevant today. Beautifully shot, my fave era of film are 60s and 80s. Exactly, and I'd put a dead stop at 80. Like 1980 is like the hard cut. But yeah, 
I think the best era is like 1970 to 1975. Those five years were peak cinema. All right, we're at best picture. Coda's gonna win. Coda or Power of the Dog? What's the best picture? What's the best picture? All right, Coda won best picture. It is what it is. Um, Unfortunately, I don't think we got a bingo tonight, but we came really close. A couple of four in a rows. Uh, four in a row here. All we needed was a relatable celebrity wardrobe malfunction. Uh, we needed um, Denzel not giving a fuck. That would have given us a bingo. Unfortunately, we didn't get that. And yeah. Really unfortunately, I wanted either John Travolta to make a scene or I wanted Grinch Fingers to be a thing. Uh, yeah, back in the chat. Lauren, um, Strangler was a fun watch. Oh, I need to add that to my list, actually. Uh, next, I went to NYC alone for four days. Um, I went to NYC alone for four days and had a blast. Complete strangers were offering me good advice and I got sexually harassed once the whole time I was there. I only got sexually harassed once the whole time I was there. Okay, I read that wrong. I thought you were happy to get sexually harassed. I, was, I read it as, I, and I got sexually harassed the whole time I was there. I didn't read the only ones, my bad. Now it's crazy in NYC. Yeah, well, especially because of the pandemic, like, drug addiction's on the rise, alcohol addiction's on the rise, crime is on the rise. It's like, the pandemic, the uh, shutdown really screwed everything over. I was working in a hospital um, for the time of the pandemic, and it was just crazy, like, the amount of overdoses that were going on. Judy became addicted to pills because of the ageist practices, absolutely. Uh, they wanted to make her look younger. They gave her uh, puberty blockers and stuff like that. Uh, that's completely fucked up. All right, Lauren, and wh whoever's watching, I want to thank you guys for tuning in. Even though we didn't get a bingo, it was a fun time to do. I'm going to wrap it up about now. Uh, we had a fun time. Last message from Lauren. I'm excited for them. They won't get another win for another 35 years, unfortunately. Um, probably uh, referring to the uh, the CODA community. Um, yeah, when you think about it, how cool would it be? You remember there's that movie, uh, Don't Breathe, where it was about a blind guy? Imagine like a John Wick-style action movie with a deaf guy. I'd, I'd watch that. It'd be badass. It'd be kind of be like uh, Daredevil. Daredevil's a blind guy. Uh, make it a deaf guy or something like that. Uh, it is what it is. But yeah, Lauren, I'm going to wrap it up. Hey, guys, I'm going to wrap it up. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, we didn't get a bingo, but we got a couple of memes in the way. We got Chris Rock getting the shit knocked out of him. Um, yeah. Guys, I'll see ya. Take care.
tune in to Garage Movie Club. I love seeing you guys. Hopefully I can do more live stuff in the future now that I figured it out for this live stream. And I'll see you guys around.